Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting week of the Dominate League and Risen Esports. I myself am Acolyte bringing you the play-by-play -play today. And on side with the color casting, I got Fantastic Fat Man. How are we doing today, sir? I'm doing good, doing good. Just ready for some Sunday League. Trying to go ahead and get into the action already. I can't wait. So from what I heard, what you just let me know is Utah State is undefeated coming into the semifinal round, right? That is correct. Posting a record of 7-0 and zero so far. They're coming in as the number one seed from Group A. And then Michigan Blue coming in. I believe that's the blue or the second team for Michigan. They have two teams in the Risen Esports League. They had Michigan Maze and Michigan Blue, both on opposite sides of the bracket. And they're coming in with a record of 5-2, and two, holding down that third slot, uh, taking over the number two team last week in WLS to secure their spot in the semifinals. So we should be ready for a good match today. Oh yeah. So starting off, we already got the draft coming. Uh, we already had the draft going. So they went ahead and uh, banned on Utah State side Rakan and Senna. So they're targeting the bot lane, whereas Michigan Blue is targeting their jungler. So they already got their eye on who they want to go ahead and uh, pick on. Yeah, and so much of it is the target man coming out in these uh, best of five scenarios. We saw it kind of in the LCS the other day. Uh, they tried to stat check the jungler in terms of closer. Uh, they wanted to ban away the junglers and say, okay, let's see you beat us with something that's off pocket pick. Um, in my limited research just now, I saw a lot of the junglers from Michigan Blue or a lot of the characters that were played were more like the Vi, um, Sejuani. So it's kind of like the, the tanky engage type champions. Mm -hmm. um, the side of Michigan Blue, they're banning out the Jarvan, uh, Echo, Gragas. I didn't see Echo oh. too much from uh, Azin in the mid lane from USU. He was playing a lot of Silas, a lot of Auction in the mid lane, especially during esports. I I didn't see the bans though, so it is possible that Echo is one of the the primary picks that he plays in solo queue. Yeah, I mean Echo, if you're incredibly well rounded in Echo, he could tower dive extremely well, especially with his level, uh, especially with his ultimate. You could go ahead and get on out of there with the quick burst. Uh, there for Utah State, they went ahead and banned out the bot lane, taking away Zeri, Senna, and Rakan. So they don't want the support on any playmaker champ like Rakan, and then also they don't want like any late scale type of situation in the hands of uh, Michigan Blues AD carry. So. Uh, from what it looks like, they're going pretty standard, though. Michigan Blue picking up Wukong. That is an extremely well-rounded jungle. Um, Utah State goes ahead and picks up Zaya in vulnerable, frame, in vulnerable frames with the ultimate. So if the Wukong does get a nice engage, you uh, uh, Zaya has the Feather Storm to go ahead and uh, position into a better, uh, better place. Yeah, and Michigan Blue picking up the Nami. So if they're picking up the Nami, that means they're projecting Lucian. Um, just based on my limited research, I don't think they were very successful throughout the year in, in Lucian. I, I could have mistyped the name. I could have looked at the wrong team. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, if you're picking Nami, you're typically picking Lucian with it. So you're looking to win that early game. You're looking to dominate levels you know, one through five. Um, but the Soraka and the Zaya going to come through. So Soraka trying to keep those people alive, kind of go from the backside. Um, so it's all going to be about Wukong. Can he get these engages off before Soraka can nullify them with the silence and with the um, the kind of heals to to get them bumped up? It's it's all about who can kind of explode the other person a little bit faster. Yeah, and then Soraka also, if somebody engages on on uh, the AD carry, like you said, the silence, it go ahead and disrupt whatever engage they have. But uh, Lucian Nami, I know I I haven't looked at the patch notes, but I know they said it's a weaker lane. So them picking it up still means that they're super confident in it. I, it's still it's still a pretty good lane bully at times. So with Raka and Zaya being a little bit weaker towards level one through three, uh, I think uh, I think they're they're gonna be pretty aggro in the uh, right from the start. And it looks like Silas getting banned out. You don't want Silas having all of your ultimates on the other side. I know yeah, he could be a game changer. <laughs> And this is where you make the really tough decision of, okay, are you going to ban away the counters to what you're going to pick on red four? Or are you going to try to ban away um, those champions that you can blind pick in the mid lane and try to force them on something that's a little bit more uncomfortable? So you do have a counter pick in that regard. Um, yeah. But this is pretty standard stuff so far. Bot side jungle picks and R1 through 3. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the 4 or 5 where you switch off the duo lanes or the solo laners and you say... You know, what are we going for? Can you pick something blindable that you can survive in, that you can play weak side, that you can facilitate for, through the rest of your team? You know, what kind of sacrifices are you willing to make? Yeah, that's definitely what they have in mind. Um, uh, right now, it looks like they're still kind of targeting Ben. Oh, 
I was going to say they might be going for another mid laner, but no, they're going to go for a Fiora. Darius and Fiora coming off. Oh, oh, they swapped it to Camille. Okay, yeah, and Camille being able to lock those threats into the middle of the Hextech ultimatum. Um, pretty big to make sure they eat the full combo from the Wukong, stay in place for the, the Nami engage as well, and can just engage from so far away. So trying to take away that dive buddy that the Vi could have. I mean, Vi wants to go in and she needs some follow-up. Otherwise, she could explode really fast, especially into like a Lucian Nami Wukong with the armor shred and with the empowered auto attacks. Yeah. Um, so just trying to disrupt what they think is the, the, the game plan. So right now, I'm seeing a lot of skirmish heavy style. I'm seeing a lot of... Oh, yeah. Uh, it's going to be 2v2s on the backside and 3v3s on the front side. So all in all, it looks like it's going to be a pretty bloody game, and we love our bloody games. Oh, yeah, that one kill per minute type of situation. And Michigan Blue, I don't know if you remember the Malphite, but Zingle Brain on the Malphite, he did incredibly well. He was able to win out some matchups that you that you would think he has the... He's on the, he's, he's, he's on the losing end of the, the lane. So taking that away, it just has a lot of utility, uh, able to decrease attack speed. You know what I mean? It's a tank with a lot of CC, so they don't want him on it. Plus, Darius is also an anti-tank uh, kind of bruiser and if he gets a lead in the top lane you don't want him coming around getting those five stacks and spreading it all around uh just decimating one two three kind of situation in the team fight so definitely targeting out bazinga brain there with a little bit more comfort his, his comfort picks and uh they round out the comp with agar that that's somewhat infinite scaling and then syndra uh, I kind of like the Vagar just a little bit more because Michigan Blue is a little bit more skirmish heavy, but um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I think e even with Nami Lucian being weak, I feel like that could still work. And plus, I like Jax over Cassante after the somewhat Cassante nerves. Mm -hmm. I like Jax a little bit more. I feel like he could go ahead and win out those lane, win out, uh, win out that lane, win out those trades uh, if uh, Bazingo Brain plays a little bit smart. Um, so I'm, I think I think Michigan Blue's team comp is a little bit better. I don't know how you're feeling. I mean, I think it just all comes down to execution. I'll say that time and time again. Yeah. Um, just kind of looking into the history, uh, Vagar has not been pulled out by Azin very recently at all in the Risen Esports. Doesn't mean he doesn't play outside, but Vagar is a powerful pick right now, especially across the pro leagues. We saw it a lot in LCS this past week uh, yeah. through tournament weekend. Um, Syndra coming out on the side of Pizza Hoot. Uh, Syndra hasn't been played for him since earlier in the season. It was probably one of the first games that he played that Syndra on. So, you know, kind of hanging back, but these champions are receiving a little bit of buffs or, you know, the the victors and stuff like that have kind of received their nerfs a little bit more recently, the Cassidans. So that's where you're seeing these mid laners kind of adjust to being these more facilitator type of champions. So that way you can engage these hyperscaling champions like the Zaya or these lane bullies like the Lucian and Nami. Yeah, as as far as Syndra goes, I think it might went out earlier in the uh, in the early levels, even though she got kind of changed and tweaked to be a scaling champion. I think she still has a little bit of the prio in the mid lane. So uh, I don't know if Wukong's going to be focusing on the bot side, but that's where I'll probably take him just to go ahead and help out Nami, Lucian Nami. <clears throat> Make sure Lucian Nami doesn't get taken advantage of when they have the when they have the push in, in the lane, and then also uh, help Syndra confirm any kill because you know the Vagar cage could be a little. <clears throat> a little hard to deal with and uh, move around, especially when you're 1v1ing in the mid lane. Yeah, the Lucian cage can be very disruptive, especially when you have these split team fights. You know, if Wukong goes in on the engage, if you can put up the Event Horizon to separate the dive from Michigan Blue, so that way you mm -hmm. can focus the front line, you can get them down, you can get their kills and create these favorable matchups for yourself. Um, I mean, that's what it's really going to come down to, is being able to facilitate these. So, so mm -hmm. I... Uh, Soraka with the silence, Vagar with the cage that's going to be able to kind of manipulate their surroundings. So Michigan Blue has to kind of navigate around these disruptions to be able to get their team fight off and running. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, Vi, the, the, I think I think U uh, Utah State has a really good comp. It's just the Vi is a little bit kind of weird to me because they got they got a pretty good front to back. Uh, but I mean, Cassante could go ahead and dive in the back line with Vi. So it's exactly how you were saying with the 3v3, 2v2. But that that the just I feel like Vi was probably the the difference maker, but you never know. Utah State's undefeated for a reason, so if their execution is mint, 
uh, I could see them running away with the game. I've been I've been wrong before <laughs> since uh, all the way back to week one. So I can't wait. I'm pretty excited. Tr trying to see what's going to happen. If there's going to be some early carnage. And uh, stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned for sure. We are going to be loading, and we have the spectator lay coming up, so we will take it to a little bit of a break. But when mm -hmm. we come back, Fantastic Fat Math and myself will bring you to game one of this best of five series. Who's going to get the upper hand and be the first to take blood off the board so that way they can make their way into the championship round? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are on the rift for game one of this best of five series between USU, Utah State Esports, and Michigan Blue. Uh, on the blue side, we have Low the Man on the top lane on Cassante, fifth business on Vi in the jungle, as in our Masters featured player right now uh, on the mid lane on Vigar, 
Valentine on Zaya, and his Valentine is not going to be Rakan, unfortunately. It will be <laughs> Kayamaya on Soraka in the support position. All right, on the red side, in the top lane, we got Bazinga Brain. In the jungle, we have Shadow Phoenix. In the mid lane, we have Pisa Hoop. And then in the bot lane, we have Poke EX Pro and uh, Bang Hua in the support role. All right, standard five point stuff coming up right here. Uh, game one, I guess you don't want to get a little crazy. We saw in um, some of the pro leagues this weekend, the level one's been pretty interesting with the level one invades, sometimes mm -hmm. through top side, sometimes through that bot river bush. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see how these teams are playing out. They're just wanting to be really cautious. Um, I don't know, maybe a little bit of nerves. Maybe they haven't been prepping for early game. I mean, who knows? Hard to say. Yeah. It looks like jungles are going to go ahead and do a standard route. Uh clear from bot to top meet up in the top lane probably in the scuttle or that's not necessarily in the top lane but in the mid lane um so pretty standard stuff so far looks like lucian and ami <clears throat> are trying to get the best of of the opposing side here on this shove once they get that level two be looking for their engage and then yeah pretty much everything else is pretty, pretty pretty standard stuff i'll see it'll, i'm kind of interested to see if i is gonna go for anything cheeky like just a bot clear into a uh, into a, a gank asap oh and there's that level two engage from the lucian getting the poke onto valentine not as much damage as we typically expect from there um uh, but pizza hoot getting the trades on it as well so hitting those level two power spikes um when you get that second ability just trying to get that early trade very common to see uh, from these people if they're able to get their abilities Vagar doing his best to kind of stack up against the Syndra right now, but very trade heavy in this mid lane I like to see it Yeah you, <laughs> Scaling scaling champs you think they don't really go in. Oh Bazinga brain Yeah, plays around in the, the bot lane. pretty well in the bot lane. Here's Vi with the level one gank or level three gank goes down forces the flash out of Lingua So does both summoners down for the Nami. We should see a repeat gank in the next five minutes. Yeah, so, oh, top side. Yeah, Bazinga Brain gets on top of him, lands the stun. Might not be able to finish it up, but we mm. see Shadow Phoenix dashes for so he goes invisible, flashes while he is invisible to get the dash, but not able to pick up the kill. So a lot of summoner spells spent early on in this game. Yeah, he should have just been patient. The ghost was already progged and just sit back, let Jax shove, and then if Kazante sticks around, thinking that Wukong's not going to be there, that, that, that would have been his time to go in. Oh! Yeah, Vi steps up on the mid lane is basically answering that blue buff. Shadow Phoenix is able to take the early scuttle. But in the lane bully lane, Pokey Pro falling a little bit behind. Um, you know, they do have to play a little bit less aggro knowing that all of the uh, summoner spells of the Nami are down. So just being a little bit more safe, respecting the possibility of the Vi coming back for the repeat gank. Remember, they did see them on the top side, so they are able to play with a little bit of freedom right now. Uh, but, you know, with the wave the way it is, they're not going to be able to out-shove a Zaya and a Soraka at the moment. Yeah, no, they're, they're definitely not. It looks like they're getting the better of it. <clears throat> the first levels, especially with the Wavai being there, kind of shoving them off, helping them get the prio. They're doing incredibly well there, mitigating any kind of lane bullying. And yeah, we saw Shadow Phoenix making his way down to the bot lane as well. Uh, did get spotted over a ward. Team backed off immediately. He knows it's warded, but he's going in for a little bit of an invade. I'm not sure if 5th Business was spotted out on any of the wards, but it looks like a possible dive coming in on the top side. Meanwhile, Shadow Phoenix oh. is behind the bot laners. Kaimai is a little bit out of range. Shadow Phoenix steps forward, forces the flash out of Zraka early, but a huge E coming out of Valentine to put down the damage. So overall, blowing one summoner spell to flash on the Soraka, so we should see a repeat gank sometime soon. Uh, the top lane, they did call off the die. Vi was just going for the Krug, so a little bit of vertical jungling coming off at the very beginning. And Vi is going to recall, it looks like, just before the Wraith camp does come up. So a little bit of a missed opportunity to steal away that Raptor camp. Oh yeah, Acolyte, we're showing our age. You said Wraith instead of Raptors. I know. <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, Wukong getting the better of that vertical jungle and just getting that extra camp because Vi's going to come to the bot side and see nothing there for her. And then super trade heavy game, but everybody's kind of everybody's kind of understanding when they need to back off and when they need to go in. So a lot of lanes are getting set up for some nice ganks. We just got to see the junglers go ahead and commit to an execution. I'm trying to see another repeat gank on the bot side. 
you kind of want to get the ball rolling for Lucian just so you could have that extra damage. Because, oh. Yeah, Nami misses the bubble, and Talonsine has the freedom to step forward. The slow has landed on the Fengua. Does not have any summoner spells available. Fifth business is on the way. She does have the flash to get on top of the Niji. They blow the exhaust to secure to kill her first. Blood goes over to Valentine on the Zaya. Utah stay making the first move, getting the first blood, and already getting the lead in six minutes of the game. So we'll see how they could do what they do with that kill, with that gold. Zaya is looking like she's the bully in this lane. And with that Raka just helping her just recover with the healing, it's it's looking it's looking pretty dangerous for the bot side of Michigan Blue. And with that pressure, that kill on the bot side, they're gonna go ahead and secure the dragon before the Rift Herald even comes up. So not even a chance to trade on the objectives globally. Um, Wukong just forced to kind of go back and do his camps. Nami does spot them out, but not able to stop the recall to stop the buy from coming through. And that's going to be the first dragon of the game, the Chemtech going over to USU. Yeah, the what's it called? The 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 Hexic Dragon is, I think, one of the best one, one solo dragon buffs because it gives the it gives ability haste and it also gives the attack speed. So uh, it's way better than a cloud, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, mid lane. Yeah, big damage from Azen on the pizza. Ooh. Who does land the primordial burst? A couple more auto attacks. The potions are ticking. As in. Not able to land the Q. Uh, Pizza Hoot did have to flash away. Um, not sure if the flash was 100% needed, but very aggressive coming out of the Utah State mid laner. Oh yeah, nonetheless, yeah, just used it just to make sure you do not want to kill on. You don't want to kill lead on that Vagar. Look at the top side. Yeah, well the man Whoa. uses the ghost to track him down, then uses the ultimate Whoa. to make him go backwards. Goes back in, and then the solo kill doesn't even need the Soraka for support. Just has the confidence to go forward and get the solo kill on the top lane. Was even down a level when that engage started. Wow, incredibly well done there by uh, La, uh, La Lo the man. And here comes <laughs> the damage that. from the bot lane, uh, knowing that Soraka was on the top side, so they spotted it out. They are trying to get the dive. The wave is being pushed in. Valentine senses that something's wrong, but here comes Shadow Phoenix. He steps forward, puts down the Cyclone, and uses the dash to go forward. E may still be on cooldown, trying to avoid the ultimate. He flashes forward to secure the kill, and he's going to die to the tower shot. So one for one overall, not the end of the world for Valentine, but could have been a little bit cleaner if he was just a little bit more patient in that bot lane bush. Uh, yeah, the Shadow Phoenix also a little bit of a misplay there. Did not need the flash. It looked like he had it. The Q does extend your range and look the at this. Brain. Yeah, he just goes right in. Flashes on top of him to secure the stun. But here is fifth business. He was already there. He was in the red buff and Bazinga Brain stepping forward. But he gets hit by the season. This does not get the last empowered auto attack with his W. And Lo the Man picks up his second kill of the game as well. And that's a feels bad man if you're the Grandmaster of Arms. Yeah, unfortunately, Bazinga Brain had that advantage. Saw that low, the man was was st sticking around for way too long, and unfortunately, goes down. And look at this. Yeah, we have a mid lane gank. The tidal wave is going to go just a little bit wide, forcing the flash off of the evil wizard Vigar himself. Oh, tidal wave, so, big big ultimate. I mean, while we're not seeing the kills, we're seeing a lot of exchanges in these summoner spells. Teams are going aggressive. They're being proactive. They're making these plays. They're not just waiting for the game to fall by itself. They want to be the main character of their own story. They want to be the protagonists, and they want to take the game into their own hands. Yeah, and it looks like Michigan Blue is getting a little hasty on their plays. Look at this. Wukong going mid lane. Uh, as in landing the sun does dodge out the Q, so he's able to avoid Ooh. the kill there from Pizza Hoot. So quick feet, see Shadow Phoenix take advantage of the aggression coming out of the mid laner for USU, and sees the monkey get his second kill of the game himself. Meanwhile, uh -oh. Bai is waiting in the bush, charging up the Q, not patient enough, as they're gonna force this down. They do have the Rift Herald in her pocket, so they're gonna push down this wave and drop the Rift Herald to put some gold on their ADC. Uh, meanwhile, Wukong on his way down, Cyclone is on cooldown. I don't think they're going to want to take this fight. They may be just looking to kind of prevent the dive from coming, stopping any kind of shenanigans from stepping forward. But overall, big plays across the map right now, bot and mid side. Yeah, I'm seeing a little bit of a, a little bit of playoff jitters, I think. There's a lot of plays that their both teams are setting up pretty good, but unfortunately the execution isn't there. But nonetheless, Utah State having the advantage here in, uh, in, in game one, 2K, almost 2K gold up. 
Oh, and there goes oh. the Featherstone. Soraka is just a little bit out of range. The Vision is going to drop on him, but the Samites are going to stop the attack for now. Pokeport goes forward, puts down the Colleen, and is trying to tick, tick, tick them down. There goes the Tidal oh. Wave. A couple more auto attacks is all they need, but they're not going to land it as Kaima has the Flash. Fifth Business is here, does have the ultimate available. Charge it up, flashes forward to secure it. Heal is popped by Fengua, and here comes the Cease and Desist. On to the Fish, he's trying to eat some sushi tonight. Flash is being sent backwards, and Pokepro puts down the Ignite, is going to get oh. the kill off the Fist Business with the last tick. Meanwhile, Pizza Who is here, does have his full combo ready and available. Kama is not going to be able to put down any kind of heals, so it's ultimately a 4v2. Silence is there to stop for a little bit, but here comes the teleport. But it is too little too late. This Pokebro gets exhausted by the Azin, and he's able to keep himself alive. He goes in deep as the double kill goes on to Pizza Who. Oh, the man teleports just a little bit too late, and Jax is going to be able to free farm as all the kills go onto the side of Michigan Blue. Oh man, incredibly well done. <laughs> Take a break. Acolyte, a lot of action already. In the... We got 10 kills, 11 minutes. We're getting to that kill per minute stage. Incredibly well done. I need to go ahead and see. Oh man, I need to... I, on my screen, I think I need to replay that team fight. It just went incredibly well for Michigan Blue. And unfortunately for Utah State, once they blew all their, uh, all their CDs and they saw that they couldn't get the kills, they were kind of in too deep already. They were peeling back way too late. And then just unfortunately for them, the Syndra did end up rotating and end up being the cavalry that they needed to go ahead and fight back they use their abilities they expend them and they completely delete every single one of them Cassante coming in way too late and then uh unfortunately for him jacks up there in the top lane went ahead and got some plates and there he just confirms the second one so the 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 gold lead the gold lead that Cassante had in the top lane gets diminished a little bit oh look at that 38 oh he's still too He's still 1,200 up. Oh, well that that ended up helping. He would have been like probably 2k up. <laughs> oh, yeah, bot lane. Oh, big damage Whoa. overstepping a little bit. Featherstorm goes forward, but he's just gonna be able to auto attack him down. And Valentine with a shutdown for himself in the 2v2 outplay. Fengua has to dodge, not able to land the room. He does with that last auto attack. He's going to miss oh. the bubble. Valentine might tick down to the tower, but the heal is going to keep him alive. And the 2v2 double kill going over to Zaya. That is not the character you want to get the gold if you are Michigan Blue. No, the, after the crit works, the hyper carry, uh, the, the Zaya is a hyper carry, but the hyper carry gets capitalized now. And with four kills on her, already having the Kraken Slayer, magical boost to help her, her movement speed position around in, in the in the team fights. It's looking very scary. And the scary thing for me is uh, with the Cassante having such a big lead, I mean, he has the Sunfire Cape completed. He's going to be getting pretty tanky. There isn't that kind of HP shred on the side of Michigan Blue to make anything happen. But meanwhile, Fifth Business steps oh. forward and he lands right into a monkey, and the Cyclone is going to take him down. Azin is forced to get away, but he is flashed onto by Shadow Phoenix, and the Colleen is going to put down some damage. But right now, he has some distance created between himself and the Lucian. Both just have basic boots. The dash should be here. Event Horizon should still be on cooldown. There should be the kill to Pokey X Pro. 4 1 and 1 on this Lucian. And the overstep yet again, USU being aggressive, trying to take charge of this game, but they ultimately fall to it. Meanwhile, Valentine gets really low. Featherstorm is not off cooldown yet. So if Pizza Who did use that ultimate, they might've been able to take him down. But just huge damage rage all across the map right now, FFM. Yep, six to nine, Utah State down on the kills, but up on the gold. Rift Herald going over to the side of Michigan Blue. So they're gonna be able to level that out. And then uh, I believe in the bot lane, we pro oh, Rift Arrow gets taken, okay. I was gonna say bot lane, it looked like they were about to engage, but Zingo Brain, you know he's known for, for always wanting the action, always wanting to go straight for kills. Does, doesn't like the small trades, likes to have a long conversation that ends with the green screen. Uh -huh. um, but uh, Michigan Blue, they, I mean, Utah State, every time they look like they have they have the lead and they have the upper hand, Michigan Blue answers right back, whether it be a mistake from the opposing team or just incredibly well uh, execution, uh, executed play on the side of Michigan Blue. So, uh, what, one way or the other, it looks like we're gonna have a pretty scrappy game. This might go up to 40 minutes. The way they just keep answering back. We'll see how the Rift Herald though uh, gets used. I know Cloud Dragon coming up in two minutes. We'll see if that's gonna be uh, where where the Rift Herald gets dropped right before that that objective fight. Hopefully, they use it smart. 15 minutes into the game, we got 15 kills so far. De almost dead even in gold. 
as a play looks to happen on the bot side. Low the man does stack oh. up those Q. And here comes the E a little bit early. He gets teleported into the middle of four. Whoa. And Low the man delivers the Grandmaster of Arms on a platter to the rest of his team. And again, Utah State making the moves. They're trying to take over the bot lane. <laughs> they're, they're trying to take over the bot side of, uh, of, the, of the jungle here. I'm looking at mid lane. Oh! Yeah, he puts down the coal and puts a lot of damage, forces the ultimate out of Valentine really early, but he guild forces forward without the Feather Storm being used and is going to just take down this damage. Kayama oh. stepping forward. Kaden with the banana Soraka ends up letting him go with a warning. Very aggressive play coming out of PokeX Pro, and that's what you want to see out of Illusion Nami lane. But you have to be able to play around those feathers or else if you're not paying attention, you could end up with the grayest screen I've ever seen. Yeah, <laughs> incredibly well done by Valentine. Just saw the misstep of Lucian a little too aggressive and immediately got the blade collar off. And uh, it, I, oh, oh, Ooh. Ooh, and solo that's kill. how quick it could happen with a 3 0 and 2. Now 4 0 and 2, Syndra with the Ludens. All you have to Ooh. land is just one of those combos and you set him up and knock him right back down. So yeah. ultimate use for Pizza Hoot. Teleport is coming off a of cooldown very soon. Uh, Dragon is going to be coming up. Cassante ultimate still on cooldown, but will be coming off pretty soon as well. So uh, teams may feel a little hesitant to start this early just because of the lack of abilities that they have right now. Summoner spells are available for most of them. We saw, like you said, the Rift Herald is going to be placed uh, in oh, uh, I don't... to oh. start this dragon. And... Uh... Yeah, it's looking a little fishy right now. I see a teleport yeah. from Vygar to the top side. So it looks like they're going to concede it. They're going to stop the mid lane push from the Herald. They're going to protect their objectives and they're going to let uh, Vagar continue to farm up his Q and get those stacks going. Oh yeah, all right there. I think I think that was a little bit of a, oh. Another, yep. another fight between the mid laners. Yep, lands a stun. Lands the Q, does not have the ultimate on cooldown. But fifth business is stepping up. Looking to put down the damage, and there it is. Flash forward, here comes the Event oh. Horizon. He flashes over the cage, but he steps back into it, and the Primordial Burst is going to secure the car for the Wizard. As it meanwhile is going to take down oh. the auto attack. The turret stops the teleport from coming in. And Bazinga Brain with the Bazinga Brain move at the moment. Just oh, uses man. this teleport for no reason, but here comes the rest oh. of the steps forward. Look at that damage just explodes. Lucian just pops like a pimple. Shadow Phoenix is on the back line. He's going to try to get some damage for himself or to pick up another kill, but he's going to be able to get out with the invisibility. So two big kills from USU, and all it takes is just one pull of the trigger for the game to flip completely on its head. We went from dead <laughs> even in gold three minutes ago to a 4,000 gold lead for USU. Man, Utah State, incredibly well done being there for the mistakes of Michigan Blue. A little bit lazy rotating. They knew they were there. Just because they didn't have the vision doesn't mean that that, that they complete that they don't know where, where the enemy team is. They knew they were there. They knew the, the, the tower dive was there. They took the turret. Jax's teleport couldn't go through. They did not need to confirm by rotating over into the jungle. They could have just came from the lane if they wanted to take away the wave and take away any kind of threat for... Um, uh, Utah State taking away the inner top turret but unfortunately they tried to get an angle on them I guess they wanted to catch them by surprise but unfortunately they're the ones that go down uh, from, uh, from from that uh, gank per se yeah I don't know uh, unfortunately for Michigan Blue they go down to Utah State again answering back and they had the momentum there from having the dragon conceding over and then they could have rotated over into the mid turret, over to the bot turret, since they saw uh, Utah State there lingering around. But I don't know. It might be. It might be just playoff jitters. You never know. This is not the Michigan Blue I remember seeing. But Utah State uh, showing why they're undefeated. Because man, oh man, anytime they get a opportunity, they take it, and they make sure they they make sure to to take advantage of it. Because now they're going to be on the aggressive side. It looks like they're going to set up for Baron Zaya. And, Great champion for taking Baron early. So one misstep of Michigan Blue on the map. They're going to be able to take that up. Yeah, uh, pretty an interesting build right here from Zaya. We typically see them build on the Vori Click Blade so that way they can keep their W off cooldown basically at all times. Mm -hmm. um, and also to get more feathers going so they can land multiple stuns and multiple fights. Uh, but going for the Infinity Edge, so looking to put out that damage, looking to two and three tap these enemy carries um, if they overstep into Zaya's range. 
But, I mean, we kind of saw in that last game, when they funneled into that little bit of a choke in the jungle, Zaya was just able to put down the feathers and then just delete a lot of the enemy members. But here comes oh. Shadow King. See, face checks Whoa. the push and hits the Cyclone button immediately. He gets a shutdown on the Zaya. Double kill on the Kama in the background. That's a three for zero right now. And they are going to put down the pings onto the Baron. Meanwhile, Bazinga Brain going to fight low the mana. All he has to do is keep him in range and stop him from getting to the team fight. Meanwhile, oh, Azen steps forward to put down some damage. And they're going to not check the bush. Bubble is going to miss, but they do put down the damage onto Azen, and they should be able to finish up this Baron. So Michigan Blue not going to go quietly into the night, but we do see a teleport oh, play coming in, and Bazinga Blade flashes forward to get the stun and interrupts. So they are going to be able to finish this Baron. As Syndra is going to zone him off, and the dodge from Bazinga Brain with the biggest brain play of the day so far <laughs> to interrupt the teleport flank. So they can finish off this Baron, oh. but it is going down very slowly until Pizza Hoot just deletes Azen off of the map. So they should be able to secure this Baron. We are going to be back even with gold pretty shortly. And Michigan Blue is wearing purple this afternoon as they take down the first Baron of the game in 22 minutes. Man, incredibly well done by Pizza Hoot over the wall. used Unleashed Power to delete the Zaya. Probably thought he could withstand the Cyclone and whatever burst Wukong had and uh, return the favor. But unfortunately, as he's getting CC, the Unleashed Power comes through the ultimate by Syndra and gets completely deleted before he could even process that he needs to click his ultimate. He needs to click his R. And uh, again, Pizza Who confirms the kill onto Vagar, so missed time backs. Oh, and, and about to confirm another kill? No, okay. Now, Valentine able to use the Feather Sword and get out of that, but you just look at how quickly that damage could happen. And this game is just teetering on a nice edge. All it takes is the push of one or two buttons to make it happen. Fifth Business was charging up his Q to go over the wall, decides not to engage onto the Baron empowered team of Michigan Blue. Um, but I just want to say, like, Shadow Phoenix face checks a bush with three people in it, and he doesn't hesitate. He pushes that Cyclone button right away and says, oh, you trapped me? No, I trapped you. Just making <laughs> it look like he knew what he was doing the entire time. Uh, Utah State, though, not resting on their laurels and sitting back. They did use that opportunity to push in, take the blue buff. They're taking the camps on the red side with the dragon being up. So they're doing their best to deny any gold possible from the Michigan blue team. It looks like they might yeah. be trying to shade objectives right here. They're death pushing a little bit. Jax is getting free hit at the bottom. Skyers. I think it's called Squire's Broom, I'm not 100% sure, uh, but they do spot them out, so the surprise isn't going to work, and Jax is going to continue to solo farm in that bot lane. Yep. Yeah, that could be that, that could be pretty bad, though, just because if they get engaged on, if they get a nice engage, I don't know if Jax... Oh! Speaking Woo! of engages... Oh! Down Big to house damage. Hell. That is just such huge damage coming out of that Syndrome. Six stacks on the Dark Seal does have the Ludens and the Shadow Plane completed. You have to imagine they're going for a Death Cap next. Um, managing the farm beautifully, by the way. Almost the most farmed in the game. Uh, oh, yeah. Just a little bit behind Cassante. So that burst could be game-changing. But here comes Pokepro stepping forward. Does land the slow oh. onto him. Shadow Phoenix steps forward. Does have the Cyclone on cooldown, but opts not to use it into the tank. So he's going to save it for a bigger fight. It's just incredible what kind of chunk can come out. Yeah, they got the they, they they got a bursty comp, and then with the cyclone, it could just help confirm those kills, add the little bit of CC to give them that extra time. Tidal wave, oh, use to disengage anything. But what I wanted to compliment Utah State was they're very proactive when they concede the dragon. Oh no! Oh. Yeah, they land the knockup on the Pokéx Pro, and here comes the Vi Ultimate Cease and Assist goes forward. But it is on the Shadow Phoenix, who is playing the tank. He is shut down right now. But Lucian does not have the damage to make anything happen. Gets ultimate by the Cassante. He's forced to step forward, and with the cooldowns, Poké Pro is alive, and the team is able to answer back. But Zinga Bray gets his first kill of the game and gets a shutdown on Cassante for himself. So big damage onto a big champion, and we still have a 4v3 in the mid lane. Vagar just free farming his Q in the bot lane for right now. But Michigan Blue able to withstand that push, withstand the engage. And right now they're in a decent spot with the 1,000 gold lead. Uh, as the objectives, we still have a little bit of time before those come off, so they are not forced to fight anytime soon if they don't want to. No, they're not. And Vega are a little behind on those stacks, only having uh, 217 already 25 minutes into the game. Usually, oh! And they step up, Event Horizon goes down, so Bazinga Bring has to sidestep around it. Pizza Hoot does get stunned oh! up as well, but he lands a massive scatter of the week on the two. Feather Storm 
keeps him alive for the meantime, but he falls down almost immediately, and Pokex Pro gets the auto attack slows from the Nami attacks, and he uses the Primordial oh. Burst on the Pizza Hoot, but it's not gonna do anything for him. And three kills going over to Michigan Blue, and you think it's just gotta be a matter of time before this game completely falls apart for Utah State. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to see which team is going to be the one to really take away the little lead that they get through a skirmish. And it looks like Michigan Blue is pulling away now up 3K. But we've seen we've seen 3-4K deficit uh, Utah State in favor of it. Uh, but for some reason, Michigan Blue keeps answering back. And then anytime Michigan Blue gets a little bit 1-2K gold in the lead, Utah State able to capitalize on whatever mistakes Michigan Blue does. So it's just haymaker after haymaker, the play after play. So they gotta really tune in because once these death, once these death timers start getting very long, that's when the game could get, you know, as you said, tipped over. <laughs> so I'm, I, I don't know. I, I'm just trying to think what's gonna be the plan for both Michigan Blue and Utah State. Utah State has a better front of back, in my opinion. So if they could go ahead and like funnel them into a jungle fight where there isn't much room to dodge anything. The Blade Caller could be so devastating, the Event Horizon, you won't even really need that cage to line people up for the Meteor uh, or for his Q, able to go ahead and uh, able go able to go ahead and confirm with this Primordial Burst. So there's a lot of ways Utah State can get back into it, but Michigan Blue, if, if they're not if they're not with the funny business, you know, they could go oh, ahead and- the, on the blue nice buff, clean. on the mini map, you can see on the blue oh. buff, Syndra got caught out on the buba by the Cassante, able to shut down the Syndra right Ooh. before Baron and the Cloud Dragon are coming up. And this could be where They're the game turns around. Shadow Phoenix is going to be able to get up and over the wall. But just right. a great heads up play from Low the Man, just seeing that the mid lane carry is on the blue buff, knowing that he's too tanky for Syndra to be able to take him down, especially without oh. a completed voice out. But the here's Zinga the Zinga Brain going on top of Azen right now. He has to wait for the cage to expire before he steps forward. He steps forward just a little bit too soon. So he's going to get stunned up as that bottom in hip turret, or bottom inner turret, excuse me, gets taken down. So USU not out of the fight just yet. All it takes is just one fight. And with how explosive these team fights have been with the Vagar Burst, with the Feathers, it could go either direction. Third dragon of the game going to be picked up for Utah State right now is Bazinga Brain with the cooldown on his ultimate. Not going to be able to step onto Azen. He steps forward oh. to threaten the jump. Is not going to be able to land the stun, but steps forward. The cage does miss. Nami. He's just waiting right now. And then here comes the Nami and the teleport. I don't think you're going to want that teleport to go through, buddy. As Lo the Man gets oh. stepped up, and Pizza Who is looking for some revenge. Lo the Man is able to get away for now. As here comes Shadow of the Phoenix with the cycle, and they're going to lock him up. And that's going to be a double kill so far for Michigan Blue. They're going to take Baron right now. Utah State oh. is looking. They did ping onto that middle inhibitor turret. So we'll see if they're going to send someone back to defend it. But that Baron, the Purple Worm, should go to Michigan Blue. Yeah, Michigan Blue is going to be able to pick up this Baron. We'll see Utah State very proactive when they concede things. They're going to go for the mid and... Uh, oh, no. Oh, it look, oh, Bazinga Brain stepped up a little too much. That was them for go ahead to, to go ahead and pick him up and take away one Baron buff at least. And that would have been an important one because he split, he's been split pushing this whole game. So taking away the Baron buff from Bazinga Brain, that would have helped out... Uh, Mitigate whatever plays Michigan Blue can do. Take uh, just just taking away that that intense split push. Oh man, they had they had it there. They just committed. They were so good in conceding things. Unfortunately, Utah State unable to pick up anything. That was so uncharacteristic of Utah State. They've usually been so decisive, so quick to pull the trigger. And then yeah. when Jack steps up, they just hesitate. We saw Vi kind of go in. We saw the other ones walk away. Um, so. Just really unusual to see that out of the team, especially one that's been so decisive throughout the series and throughout the season. Yeah, well, it's getting later to the game, so that's when the nerves start picking up. One false move, one bad trade. We keep, we keep, we keep reiterating it, but it could cost the game. So that's when they're going to be a little bit more hesitant to do those aggressive plays. Or one push right now coming out of the side of Michigan Blue. They have the Baron and Power Minions, but Zaya is able to take them down a lot. Pokéx Pro dashes forward. They're not able to capitalize on that with the Vagar Cage. But oh. Jack pushes up a huge scatter of the weak lands. Fifth business is already at about 10% HP. And that's without the ultimate from Pizza Hoot. So putting down some big damage and all he has to do is land one. I think they have the go ahead. They have the confidence after seeing that burst to step up and secure the kill if it happens again. Yeah, Utah State looking to go ahead and 
Oh. oh, yeah, you see Bazinga Break stepping up a little bit too far. Shadow Phoenix is there to kind of mitigate. He steps forward and gets the Cyclone and is able to get out. So he's able to bail Bazinga Brain out of that situation while the rest of the team steps forward. Great heads up play from Shadow Phoenix. Bazinga Brain was on the backside, trying to get the stun onto the Vibe before they step forward too far. But oh. he's like, who is going to get locked up before he can unleash his power. And here comes the damage. Pokex Pro doing his best to kite back. And he does kite and get the kill. He's on a rampage on the Vi. And Azen is just eating the coin right now as Lola Man takes off. Nami from the map. Shadow Phoenix does have the Baron Empowered recall, so he is able to go back as PokePro has to walk all the way back to his base. There is no minion wave on the side of USU, so all they can do is take away some jungle camps right now. But even though there are 4,000 gold down, they get the catch that they need. Uh, Bazinga Brain not able to intercept the Vi before they can get onto the mid lane carry of Michigan Blue, and that's just how it transpired. Yeah, the theme of the game, Utah State able to capitalize on mission, uh, uh, Utah State able to capitalize on the mistakes of Michigan Blue. Cyclone used to disengage, to run away. Bazinga Brain was already gone. Shadow Phoenix had no business being there. And Utah State able to capitalize. They saw, hey, their main engaged. The main reason they, uh, the main reason they're able to set up the Syndra is gone. Now it's their time to go ahead and go onto the Syndra. And that's exactly what they did. Cease and desist onto the Syndra. Caught him out, primordial burst to execute, and they're they're uh, a big chunk of damage is taken away from the board, so that's when they could go ahead and take over the team fights, and that's what they're gonna keep on doing. They're gonna keep on focusing that Syndra and being an immobile champ, that is very scary. Did, did not go crown, so the burst is always there and available for Utah State, and uh, yeah, that, I think I think that's a little bit of a reality check for Michigan Blue, showing that hey, they're not invincible. Yeah, they got the momentum. Yeah, they got the lead, but. They need to they they need to take it one step at a time, and really uh, focus in on going together as a group, lane by lane, if they want to squeeze out this victory. Yeah, and we have to remember, Vigar is one of the ultimate scaling champions. Almost has his death cat completed. He might be going back to purchase it right now. But the longer the game goes, the more powerful he is going to get. He does finish that death cap, so he should still be able to burst people out if Vi is able to get the lockdown. <coughs> If Cassante is able to single him out and deliver the team into the middle of Utah State, um, we're getting to the point in the game where you know it doesn't really matter how farmed you are, or how many, because everyone's going to be at six items. Everyone's yeah. going to be powerful, so it all comes down to execution. Low the man playing security right now as the Cloud Dragon is going to Dragon fall. Point. Teleport is coming, but it's going to come on top of a Vagar cage, and Azin is just going to put it down and run away. So they're going to use the movement speed from that Cloud Soul to get away. Uh, Syndra was looking for a little bit of a flank to get spotted on a ward, so they're going to take this mid lane priority, and they're going to try to use this to secure an inhibitor for themselves as Michigan Blue, or sorry, Utah State hits that recall button. Yep. Utah State, uh, Michigan Blue unable to really get much. A lot of the jungle camps are already down, but this is Utah State's momentum here. They got the Cloud Souls, so cease and desist a little bit of the, that. Uh, a, l a little bit of that uh, movement. Oh no, it's it's a uh, out of common movement speed now. So they're gonna be able to rotate on the map a lot more, and then the slow resistance as well. So any kind of any kind of slow that the Nami has, Illusions peeling is gonna be pretty much taken away. I'm yeah, trying. This is where oh. all the catching power comes out. Look, they're caught over these wards, so they're gonna give up their inhib tower basically for free right now, as they get really lazy on the recalls. Jax is on the bot side. He is going to hit that back button to try to answer the fight. He thinks something is going to happen. They're not going to try to trade. If Pizza Hoot lands a big scatter of the week, that might be something they can do. But here comes oh. the forward. The Vi tries to get something on, but they're not going to be able to secure the kill. And this fight is explosive. Whoa. Wukong goes down in the middle of the fight. He's getting resurrected. His Pokeball has to put out the damage. But Lo the Man is just taking it all up. Nami doing the best they can to peel for PokeX Pro. And he's going to be able to kite it out. Can he get it done? No, he can't. As IS steps forward, he's able to free hit on all of them. And here comes Bazinga Ring on the top side. He's going to be able to take down Soraka to be just a little bit of HP left. But Bazinga Ring should be able to get on top of Valentine. Whoa. He was doing his best to kite it away. And what an explosive fight that was. All I had to do was blink, and the fight was almost over already. Pizza Hoot getting a little <laughs> bit too jumpy on that Zanyas. We saw Vi was trying to get on top of him, but wasn't able to land it. And even though Cease and Assist was off cooldown, was able to be used. He uses the, uh, the not the Zanyas Hourglass, but the stopwatch just a little bit too soon. And that allows Vagar to put down the damage and get the burst necessary to take out Pizza Hoot before they're able to put down a lot of damage themselves. Um... 
I mean, the big sun, the big combo right now for the Syndra is to land that Unleashed Power, get those orbs on the flow, and then just mass AoE stun everybody. Yeah, the, yeah exactly. But Pizza Who was able, uh, was able to take down as in right before he right before he himself went down. The Primordial Burst didn't quite execute, so they kind of just did an ability trade, and they both went down. So one for one from what it looked like to be an even worse situation, and then he was able to rely on his team to extend the fight and really fend them off, but mid inhibitor is down, so they get the push, they Bucket get the minions. in a weird spot, and oh. there's the Event Horizon onto the Nami, Ooh. just able to limp away from that, as in not wanting to use the ultimate to secure his sushi for tonight, and Fago are gonna be able to sustain up, as the Baron is being danced around, they do not have vision of it, but they do have the Scuttle Crab vision, and it is falling down so fast, Shadow Phoenix is caged outside of the wall, is getting stunned up. And here comes Mazinga Bring on the top side, going after the Soraka first and foremost. And here's the Soraka, and there goes the Baron over to the side of Michigan Blue. The rest of the team is not going to be able Whoa. to put him off as here comes Low the Man trying to go in 1v3 as Bazinga Brand gets a kill for himself. And that is going to be the ace. That is going to be game one for Michigan Blue. If they can catch a minion wave, they're going to go straight for the bot side right now where they have a wave. 40 second death timers right now on the side of USU. Not can enough. they get to that base in time? I don't think it's going to be fast enough, but they are going to do their best to put some damage down onto the base and keep this game going. What a team fight. Yeah, it's incredibly well done by Bazinga Brain, able to get the bot lane, goes and focuses down Soraka, so their utility, their healing, their silencing, their slows, completely taken away. And then Zaya has to back off, has, has to fend off the Jax as well. Doesn't want to really go in and engage because the Bazinga I, Brain has the angle on him. Are they going for so, it? Oh. It looks like they're going for it. Soraka is there. Bazinga can, Brain is can. taking up two tower shots. Here comes the minion. Oh, they could have. They could have actually, I don't know. It would have been close. It would have been really, really close. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, man. I would have been calling for it to do it. Oh, I didn't oh. even see that. As in. Yeah, as it just teleported in on the backside. But now that team is split up from Michigan Blue, they had the Baron empowered recalls, but they got stopped on multiple fronts. And Azen was looking for the back door with the stacked mini wave, is able to take down one Nexus Tower himself. And this late into the game with that much ability power, Azen can just two, three, four tap those minion towers if he has the minions around him. He's actually not able to take down that Nexus Tower, excuse me. Um, but still just putting down that pressure and just reminding Michigan Blue, they still have to keep on top of their toes. Yeah, now they got, again, <laughs> momentum change. Now Michigan Blue has all the momentum. Super minions on two waves, so the Baron is going to be that much easier to get. Elder coming up in a minute. But it looks like they're not even going to wait for objectives. It looks like they're going to set up a fight for themselves. No objective needed. Oh. That is correct. Ten seconds right now. Five seconds on Dancing. Azen, I guess we should say. As they're going to dance around this mid lane tower. We see one tower is already uh, injured very badly, but they are just going to walk it oh, in. Okay. They, okay. they want to play it carefully. We have the Elder Dragon coming in 30 seconds. So they're going to use this time to set up vision. They do have to catch that mid lane wave if they want to stop anything crazy from happening. Here comes Pizza Hoot on the backside. They don't have vision right now, but he may be looking for oh. a scatter of the week on the way back. And this could be the oh. team fight to end it all right now. They're just going to walk into him. Fingwa steps forward, puts down the damage. And Cyclone, huge Cyclone from oh. Shadow Phoenix on the back line. This Brain gets locked up by the Hermit Horizon. But it's going to be too little too late for all of them. Oh. Huge damage coming out from the Zaya, but they're going to shut down the Jax. But he's going to fall ultimately. And there goes uh, Soraka on the backside, going to fall down. Low the man doing his best to put down the damage as well. But Syndra just teleports out of there onto the bot lane and says, that's okay, you guys can take up the kills. I want to kill the Nexus. I want the 50 gold. I want game Ooh. one for my team. As we kick off this series with a banger. Oh man, oh man. That's that's, that's game one to Michigan Blue, Utah State. I don't know how well they did in the best of threes, but if they've lost any of them, that means they've come back and secured the dub. Undefeated Utah State, I'm now that much more intrigued in the series to see how Utah State's gonna answer back. They saw Pizza Hoot was a problem. They saw once he got the once he got the lead, he was able to snowball the plays for Michigan Blue and able to also uh, basically help out any kind of mistake, mitigate any kind of mistake. Because if Pizza Hoot doesn't have the damage, the top the top fight doesn't go their way. Some of the some of the skirmishes in the base don't go their way, and. Now they know exactly who they probably got to fo focus in on. They were they were uh, they were focusing on the bot side. Uh, oh, <laughs> they uh, the, they were focusing on the bot side, but now they might be focusing on Pizza Hoot. But a uh, Syndra, not an ordinary pick. So 
then again, are you gonna are you gonna probably take away like strong synergies in the bot lane and like second rotation take away mid picks? There's a lot of things that there's a lot of options they can go. I'm truly interested on in, to see what Utah State's gonna do to answer back. I'm surprised to see Asin being put on something that's more of a facilitator. I mean, Vagar likes to be the person that kind of set up the plays from behind, uh, kind of work the map and kind of wait for his team. And you saw he got punished from being out of position again and again. 12 deaths that game, coming from the highest eload player that's pretty much in this series right now. Um, so it'd be kind of interesting to see if they can put him on something that's a little bit more... I, I like face rolly type champion, kind of like the Action or the Silas. I saw that got banned in second rotation. Um, mm -hmm. They did opt for blue side. USU did have the number one seed, so they opt for that power pick at the beginning. And they power picked the Zaya without the Rakan. Maybe they should have picked the Wukong instead, or maybe they should have picked something that was a little bit more two dimensional from the jungle. Um, but I mean, it just all came from Azen being just a little bit too aggressive in Michigan blue, just kind of preying on that letting Syndra get those power spikes, being able to just pop people over and over and over again, and Lucian being able to follow up with that damage. So, yeah. I mean, great play, great mental for Michigan Blue, because Utah State Esports was up 4,000 gold, remember, at 18 minutes, how that just ballooned off of one team fight? It's yeah. so easy to let that game go at that position, but they just kept fighting, they kept finding their picks, they took the good team fights, they pulled the trigger, they did not hesitate at all, and they earned that game one victory. Oh, yeah, did they? Did they? But Utah State, they look like they have a deadly macro decision-making uh, team. Every time they conceded something, they made sure to get proactive on the other parts of the map. So that's one upside that I truly see. Michigan Blue had the better end of the team synergy as far as team fighting goes. But when it came down to macro, it looked like, it looked like Utah State was on another level. Um, once they get a lead, I want to see how deadly that can be. Now, when when they have the when when they have the objective control, when they have basically all all the wards in the jungle setting up death brushes, I want I want to see. I kind of want to see that too. I'm interested to see how well Utah State answers back again. I keep saying that, but it's just I'm just so intrigued because I haven't really seen that much. Uh, I haven't really seen that much decision making as far as when a team is on the back end. It kind of goes into a skirmishy team fight. And then they end up they they end up winning the team fight and that's how they get back into the game. But I haven't seen a team necessarily make macro decisions to get back into the game. So that's why I truly am <laughs> uh, excited to see what the next games uh, uh, hold for us. I know. With that being said, we're gonna start setting up for a game two. We're gonna get everyone into the rift, kind of get the. The, the adrenaline back down because we're going to restart at level one and you don't tap people nearly as hard with a level one Q as you do at level 18. No, no. <laughs> uh, so we're going to hit that reset button for a little bit, get you guys going with a little bit of an intermission. We will bring it right back to you guys shortly, get in the draft as soon as possible. So stick around because you do not want to miss this series as mm -hmm. Michigan Blue takes game one off of the best of five against Utah State. Stick around.
All right, fantastic, Fat Man. We are back again with draft of game two of the Dominate semifinals with Michigan Blue taking over an explosive game one of this series. Uh, USU having lost that first game, they did have side selection. They opted for a blue side yet again. And so far, we're seeing the same in the draft with the Echo and Senna bands. Yep, it looks like they're going to go ahead and keep targeting that bot lane. I'm, probably, I'm pretty sure they're going to switch up. Uh, Nami, I don't think, was too much of the problem, but Lucian definitely was in the bot lane. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Z Z Z uh, they saw that Zaya worked against Lucian. Sorry about that. Uh, misremembered. So they might be able to go through with the same bot lane uh, bans. And if Michigan does the bot lane picks in the first rotation, they're going to be able to use their second set of bans on the mid lane. But we'll see. Michigan getting red side again. So that's going to leave Pizza Hoop's counter up if they give it to Pizza Hoop. Yeah, and yet again, it's it's kind of like just a run back. So that's just saying that they didn't think it was a mistake. They thought they just misplayed. They didn't think it was a mistake on their draft part. Mm -hmm. um, but still just kind of banning those playmaking champions on the side of USU, banning away the Jarvan and the Echo, who can just engage from so far away, be slippery, and really lock down the team fights. Mm -hmm. Um Zeri banned yet again, so it's the two scaling AD carries and the Rakan being banned away. I thought it was a little bit of a misplay to ban Rakan and then pick up the Zaya. You usually like to see those together in tandem. Yeah. Um, but, it, I mean, it's hard to say. It's hard to say how it would have played out. That game could have gone either way, uh, especially when we were in the mid-game of that series. But who's going to yeah. come up the last ban from Michigan? Did they see anything that was a big problem? Mm, and they banned nope. the Camille away yet again. And Whoa. that is... One of the champions that USU had a lot of success with, Yo the Man, did very well on Camille throughout the season, had several wins earlier on. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. He may have lost one match, maybe one. I'm not 100% sure. We'd have to check that out. But definitely a playmaking champion, and USU opting for the Zaya first pick yet again, looking for the run back. Oh, and it looks like they're going to want the Gragas, really. I would have I figured that the Wukong still would have been the play. Wukong was able to facilitate so much, was able to set up so much for the team fights. So I would still definitely pick the Wukong. Gragas, I always have a hard time understanding Gragas' uh, uh, MO in, in team comps. Oh, okay. I was going to say because the explode, exploding cask kind of messes up. Like if you're don't, if you not very conscious of it, it can mess up the, the, the alignment of, of all your abilities, any kind of setup that you have. It's yeah. it's a very disrupting ultimate. So for disengage, I think it's incredibly well. I think for engage, it's so hard to execute. So unless you are supremely well versed in that champ, I say stay away. But Wukong getting picked up. I'm assuming the ADC or support. Okay. Yeah, so yep. running it back yet again. And I can mm -hmm. kind of see where Michigan was going with that. I think they were looking to pick up that Gragas to flex it because Bazinga Brain did have a very good season on the Gragas pick. Oh, and so they're okay. thinking, oh, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we'll pick him right now and we'll flex him. So that way USU doesn't know what to pick. And then they thought to themselves, but then that means we're giving over Wukong. So they just end up taking Wukong. Yeah. Uh, Shadow Flame just had an excellent game on Wukong. Just so fast on those engages. Oh. But the Hecarim coming through, that's something I haven't seen in a while. Oh yeah, and the Soraka again. I would have loved Lulu instead. I think Lulu would have would have helped out so much in that in that game. Mm -hmm. Soraka just takes a like if Soraka doesn't have a little bit of doesn't doesn't really have the positioning in the team fights. Doesn't have that uh, Moonstone Renewer. You know, it take it takes a while for her to really become a nuisance. Uh, so I would I would have prepped Lulu. Lulu just her abilities just help out so more so much more. I think as an enchantress, she's like the best one for the bot lane. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, but they decide nope. Okay, Malphite getting taken away again. Yeah, I, I can see why they pick Soraka. Maybe they're thinking that, that way they could help match sustain against the Nami lane. Um, but you know, you're right. Having the heal and the polymorph could stop a lot of the engages. They could disrupt the Wukong ultimate, mm -hmm. um, you know, with the wild growth, being able to kind of get the knock up that little extra CC that they might've needed to hold people in place. Yeah. 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 Like you said, yeah, exactly. Lulu just provides so much more rather than just healing. And then if Soraka, like I said, doesn't get the positioning, her her slows and silences don't really make sense. And oh yeah, Greg <laughs> Greg is getting picked up, so that's pretty good. His lane his lane phase can be 
a nuisance just because of the whoa, Milo. No, no way. Yeah, no way. Um, I mean, <laughs> anything, anything out of support just looks a little awkward. Yeah. But, I mean, there's there's the Gragas. So there's the blind pit Gragas for Bazinga Brain. I mean, with the Jax, you could tell he kind of struggled in the earlier levels, but as he got ramped up to that three item threshold, he started to be a little bit more powerful. Exactly. Milo? Mm -hmm. No, oh, wow. I was gonna say no way. Oh, Olaf, I kind of like that because, like you said, he was struggling. Uh, Bazinga Brain was struggling in the lane phase. You give Low the Man somebody, somebody who isn't necessarily a tank but has the damage right from the, right from the start. That could be a little scary. Olaf, this Olaf with the Ragnarok doesn't get CC'd as he's attacking. It stacks his his ultimate to last that much longer. So Gragas mispositions once, which Bazinga Brain had a little, you know, Bazinga Brain did mismanage his abilities and misposition a bit. He's he do, he doesn't really have anything to to get him out of there. And then a Kali getting picked up. Whoa, yeah, an assassin, um, more proactive. That's that face roll kind of champion I was talking about. A Kali yeah. has that ability to really take over games just on their own. A Yone oh. makes them pretty. <laughs> AD heavy, but they do have the AP coming out from Gragas in the top side, so that will not be a tank Gragas. It looks like we'll probably get like the, the Rod of step. Ages with the Seraphs, or maybe yeah. even go in that one shot build with the Night Harvester. I mean, you know, who knows? But if you're playing into an Olaf, you're probably looking to be a little bit more tanky and provide that front line your team needs. Yeah, most definitely. But if they go skirmish heavy, you know what I mean? The 3v3 is a 2v2 type of situation. And uh, take advantage of Olaf not being there and kind of left on the top island. Maybe they can. Maybe they can go ahead and come in and uh, take over the game. Yon, I like that, though. That's kind of... That kind of... that. <laughs> that I, I feel like they're kind of conversating with that mid lane pick. You know, Akali is like, okay, I'm going to show you what I could do when I have kill threat. Mm -hmm. And then Yon's being picked is like, oh, okay, cool, right back at you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> getting picked up he, he could he could just destroy in a team fight with the lethal tempo picking up all the knockups the cc that he provides is 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 immense and then akali kind of doesn't have cc but has all the damage so uh i think i think i'm still in favor of michigan blue again yeah, I've I've played the Yone into the Kali matchup. Granted, I am a trash Yone player, and I just got worked in that matchup. But I mean, oh, okay. But we'll we'll kind of see how it plays out because the Kali just has such high base damages, and Yone doesn't yeah. have that ability to kind of dash around and get that distance from a Kali on a whim that he may need, or just be able to create that separation once a Kali gets on top of him. But I mean, maybe it's just kill or be killed in that situation. We'll kind of see how it pans out. Yeah, it might be a skill matchup there in the mid lane. Uh, I'm not too familiar with Yon versus Akali. I don't really see that much. But melee for melee, I know Yon favors those. Uh, but like you said, Akali provides so much damage. So he gets whatever good trade. If, if Akali if a, a Kali or Azin gets a good trade in the mid lane, providing he has uh, the ultimate, yeah, he could, he, he could get the advantage in the lane as well. That execute ultimate. It could get real nasty. Yeah. But, the, one thing yeah. I'm really, really concerned about from the side of USU is just the kind of the lack of CC they have to keep the Zaya safe. I mean, yeah, Zaya has the Feather Storm, and then uh, Hecarim and Olaf are just going to run rampant on whoever they want to run rampant on and dive onto. But yeah. I mean, if you're picking Zaya, you're picking Zaya to be that hyper carry to put out massive damage, just to keep that uptime on the W again and again and again. And if you don't have those people to create space for the Zaya, it makes it really difficult for Zaya to operate in this kind of environment. Yeah, but I mean, they had all the CC before in game one, and it just did not work out. So maybe they're gonna, then maybe they're gonna take the, they're 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 not gonna take that route, and they're gonna go for a more skirmish heavy route where they have champions that will thrive in in the chaos rather than necessarily needing to play front to back because. I thought they had all the CC in the world to go ahead and do that. The front to back, I thought they would win every single fight, but that just wasn't the case. And the final fight, technically, you could say, was like a front to back because Michigan Blue was just tunneling onto them. But by then, it was kind of too late. The six items, everyone was so strong. Everyone could get deleted in just a matter of seconds. So, I yeah, uh, Utah State is probably just going to ditch that ditch that type of play play style. And just go for something that thrives in chaos, which Michigan Blue, you know, does. <laughs>
And I'm going to be interested to see what kind of build the Hecarim goes. You see so many different builds from the Mirror Mana build over to the Eclipse build to Triforce to just Hearthsteel tank. I mean, what what do you think we can expect to see out of the Hecarim for this game? Yeah, well, I mean, Hecarim, he's going to be, he's, he's obviously going to be diving onto the Yon, Yon, I mean, uh, to the Lucian Nami, but... Lucian is so mobile, especially with Nami, the tidal wave, the bubble. We saw, unfortunately, uh, Fang Hua miss uh, a lot of key bubbles. But game two, if that's a different story, then Hecarim could go ahead and just get CC'd to, to death. And then Lucian just helps peel the calling, especially if he has a lead. He's going to be able to melt him. Hecarim would have to go a little bit on the tankier, which takes away from his damage. So Hecarim, I don't think, is the greatest pick. But and his options are limited in this. So again, I think their jungle pick is the factor that makes me say Michigan Blue has a little bit of a better comp. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of damage from Michigan Blue. Seeing a lot of CC from the body slam to the cyclone to everything else. Yeah. But you know, time and time again, it all comes down to execution. So let's see who can pull it off. As yep. we enter in the spectate delay, we're going to go ahead and take a little bit of an uh, intermission break as we load up onto the rift. Make sure you stick around. Don't go too far. And we'll see you shortly.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game two of the Risen Esports Dominate League semifinals. Michigan Blue having taken game one off of Utah State University. And we are back to see Lo the Man on blue side with the Olaf in the top lane. Fifth business on the Hecarim, as in on the Akali. Valentine on Zaya on the bot lane and Kaya Maya on the Soraka to round out support. And for Michigan Blue on the top side, we have Bazingo Brain on the Gragas, Shadow Phoenix on the Wukong, Pisa Hu on the Yon, Pokey X Pro on the Lucian, and Feng Hua on the Nami in the support role. Alright, and as we're kind of bringing in this game, a uh, little bit different coming out. Uh, basically, the overall story is the same, the details a little bit different. Bot lane is running it back, but we see a top lane change. Uh, Bazinga Brain bringing out the Gragas instead of the Jax. Uh, had a lot of success during the regular season, but Lo the Man was ready and waiting with the Olaf pick. And so I'm really excited to see how that one plays off. It looks like Lo the Man kind of had the game uh, for his team in his hands. So it'll be really exciting to see that happen. And Pizza Hoot on the Yone. I mean, he did really good in the control mage. So let's see if he can kind of get into the other team's face and really create that chaos that he needs to do. Yeah. The bot lane was... They're, they're, they're getting the better end of these trades. It, was, it wasn't... That wasn't the case uh, in game one. Lucian Nami kind of got fended off and then Zaya was able to pick up a good lead. Lucian didn't die so much and he was able to somewhat keep up. I, I remember it, there, there was a time in the game where both Zaya and Lucian were like 4-1. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if uh, Michigan Blue can help Lucian and Nami stay in this game because they were not getting the better of the trades like they are here. And early on, you could see the ping onto the Hecarim on that Raptor camp. Yone stepped forward to put the war down, so they're able to path the Hecarim. They're going to avoid that level 3 gank that they had to worry about in game 1. Um, that basically led to Vi going down and getting the Nami flash and basically allowing USU to exert that early game pressure. So this kind of frees up the Lucian Nami to be that lane bully that they want to be. And you can already see the damage right now with him taking off the bone plate from Kayami. He dashes forward but not able to make anything happen. But so far, really good aggression from the, the bot laners. Oh, look at the Wukong already setting up. Different story. He pads bot. Yeah, he's sneaking in behind enemy lines. There are no wards. And here comes the speed up from Pokey X Pro. They're able to get the slow onto Valentine. But here comes Wukong. He's going to get rooted up. So he may eat a lot of damage here for that. No summoner spells. Actually, two summoner spells blown. The Soraka using the flash and the heal coming out of Valentine. So Shadow oh. Phoenix being able to get those summoner spells early would be very beneficial for his team. Um, we should see him revisit the bot lane yet again in a few minutes, in about three or four minutes, once he clears those topside camps. Yeah, both some two summoners expended there's the heal and the flash, so most definitely would be the wisest move to come right back. I like how he left some of the camps up too. He speeds up the process of the gank and he's able to come back, uh, have a reason to linger around on the bot side. And oh, yeah, big damage from Pokéx Pro forcing the exhaust out of Kayama or Kayamaya. So that's going to be pretty huge. But here comes fifth business. He is over a ward, so Bazinga Break does see this coming. He is going to get knocked back, but here comes the slow with the auto attacks and the red buff. The axes Ooh. are going to land, but he's able just to body slam away, puts down a barrel for good measure as well. So not even being forced to expend a summoner spell. That's a lot of time that Hecarim had to spend going through the red side jungle of Michigan Blue to go all the way up there and wrap around. Yeah, the the Gragas, unless he's like completely low, that W helps out so much. And then plus he has the phase rush to get out of there. So he does help out, but Olaf a little low isn't going to be able to fully take advantage of that, that gank's pressure. And then Wukong decided to go ahead and come topside as well. So the gank is available. Yeah, oh. look at this damage. Bazinga Brain using the Body Slam to force him back, but Shadow Phoenix is just sitting here and waiting. Bazinga Brain did have to be careful to make sure he didn't eat an axe, and Lo the Man is forced to pop oh. the Ghost and get away. Shadow Phoenix is able to track him with the Oracle's Lens. Does have Flash available. If he can hit the dash up pretty soon, oh. he can auto attack, but there's the shield, and Lo the Man is just going to dance around the tower and flash the emotes. Can Shadow Phoenix live? He does, just barely with that potion ticking. And as it tick ticks down, that's a great outplay from Low the Man to be able to get him going. Where did the shield come from? W, his new W. Oh, it's man. so nasty. The, the it, it basically gains like 40 attack speed, and then uh, he also gives him a 
health shield depending on his missing health, so it becomes huge when he's low. Well, you can tell someone didn't read the patch notes. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think that's a little old. Yeah. yeah, Shadow Phoenix was on his way down, so he is trying to, to get those camps even with that low health, so if Hecarim does spot him out, it could be a little bit dangerous. Uh, fifth Business did spend quite a bit of time on the bot side looking for that gank, but team was pushed in. It's really hard for Hecarim to lock anyone down on that bot side. Yeah, Utah State, they need to get a little bit more proactive in my opinion. Ocean Soul, I mean, Ocean Dragon is up. That's a, that's not too bad of a, a first drag. I know some people will say it isn't that good. Some people love to say it's amazing. So I keep it at the middle just for, you know, just, just, to, <laughs> just to keep a safe conversation going. But the Ocean Drag being up. I would expect them to try to pick that up as soon as possible because they were they were they got they got soul in game one so they know that their objectives uh their their objective timing and their macro is a little bit better than mission gun blue so they should keep that they they should keep that path uh to victory there for game two as well especially since they have different picks where low the man can go ahead and really take off in those skirmishes uh Objectives, objectives, objectives. I think this should be the Utah State's main priority. Yeah, that'll be their bread and butter, especially having that prior on the bot lane. But Yone is able to keep Azin perpetually pushed in with this Yone. Is able to stack up. He uses that E on cooldown to get in, get the wave pushed in, and get out without eating too much damage. Is falling pretty low oh. down, but here comes the damage. We see the combo from Azen on the Akali. Has a perfect execution, uses the R2, puts down the damage, and Fifth Business uses the Onslaught of Shadows to get up, but he gets knocked up, and that's a fourth tower shot that's ramping up the damage. And here comes Shadow Phoenix. Pizza Hoot does have the shield available, misses the Q, but here comes first blood for oh. Shadow Phoenix. So he puts down oh. the damage, and Pizza Hoot goes back in for the 2v2 kill. Huge play for Michigan Blue. Incredibly huge play for Michigan Blue. The both kills did not go onto the Yone, but it, which is which is fine. But two kills on Yone would have been fantastic. But Wukong picking up a kill, Yone picking up a kill, now has that lead onto the Kali. Therefore, Kali's got a second guess when, when, uh, when, uh, when, uh, when he goes in. So very scary for the Kali in the mid lane. Hecarim's gonna have to probably come around, and there you go. They reap the rewards there able to get the ocean drag and I, I mean what massive disrespect coming out of utah state esports right there i mean akali was trying to downs figured they did have to get that second kill but meanwhile on the top side low the man pops that ghost to get on top of his oh. brain. he's forced to flash out and he goes back to Whoa, his tower where he knows there's brain. no minion waves and what a bazinga big brain play that was <laughs> to flash back towards his tower I never would have thought yeah. to do that. No, me neither. I would have. I would have completely flashed to the other turret. He he knew that the wave was gone, so he went forward. But yeah, as you were saying, it was very disrespectful to go in. Oh, this fight. And looking See? for that execute here, he gets the shield, oh. gets the damage, and gets the pop of the percentage missing health damage from Jeez. the Yone. So the solo kill from Pizza Who on the mid lane. Sticking around a little bit too long though to try to get that minion wave. He does get this third stack of his Q to get out, gets the shield, but is he gonna be able to live long enough? Wukong is not here to save him oh. this time, but the red buff is tick tick ticking. Onslaught of Shadows is still on cooldown, and Pizza Who gonna be able to walk away, not only walk away, but go back into harm's way to get the rest of those minion creeps. Oh man, that Vamp Scepter, that kill leads again to another kill and to the safety. Just all of that damage that he's able to heal up. It isn't crazy amount, but since it's low, is since it's lower levels, you know, 100, 200 damage, and then like 20, 30 heal really make a difference, you know. And you know what the amount was? It was enough. Ooh, <laughs> I like that. Yes, it was. And then also the story is completely different on the bot side again. Zaya Raka not really getting the not not really getting the prio, not really getting the the advantage and and uh, the the poking, you know, kind of kind of trading. Whereas in game one. Uh, Valentine and Kiyomiya was completely taken over. The they were Michigan Blue was misplaying a lot of the trading, so that in itself has changed. You know, you got to go ahead and take that into uh, in, in account. How much how much it was our plays taking over the game, and how much of it was Michigan Blue making mistakes? Michigan Blue made a lot of mistakes. So, oh, 
And this might be it. The Shroud is down. It is on cooldown. Here's the knock up one. There's the knock up oh. two. And all he has to do is E back to get that execute damage. And he finishes it off. So Pizza Hoot gets his third kill of the game. And Azen basically just kind of inting the series away right now. Just getting a little bit too aggressive. Pokey Express oh, up, lands the cool. And there's a huge chunk of damage forcing oh. the Wish out of the Soraka. But he's going to be forced to eat a lot of feathers if he sticks around any much longer. All right, show the wave into a potential turret dive. No, 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 no. Nobody's around. But yeah, as I was saying, you got to think how much was Michigan Blue making mistakes and how much of it was our plays uh, getting us the advantage. That's another thing to take into consideration in these long series. So Michigan Blue looking a lot better. Four kills up. Only a thousand kill. Uh, only a thousand gold up. Uh, just because it looks like the CS, as far as the CS side goes, it's a little bit more in favor on the top side, top and jungle for uh, Utah State. So we'll see if Low the Man can go ahead and get proactive in this uh, in this game. I think looking at the situation right now, Hecarim should be prioritizing that Rift. Wukong did get the first Rift Herald, so Hecarim should be prioritizing trying to get the second one and trying to get Olaf out of this lane potentially hovering around topside trying to look for tower dives because bazinga brain is getting very careless with his mana he is using it completely up uh has a tier of goddess he's trying to stack it up ekram should try to hover the top side a little bit more in my opinion and try to get olaf out of that lane yeah and we're seeing just big damage coming out of the yone too basically being able to out sustain at this moment Hecarim is waiting for them to get aggressive. Nami goes up. They've thrown a little bit safe with that pink ward. And here oh. comes the dash forward, and this could be it right there. As Valentine doesn't go back, he steps forward. The exhaust goes down after Evolution uses his combo. Uh -oh. And right now, they're stuck in the middle. 2v3. Fangwon forced to kind of get himself away. Does not have the tidal wave. Uses it a little bit too late. As meanwhile, in the mid lane, Azen gets jumped on yet again. So trying to keep the pressure on the basically the elo checking mid lane carry. But Shadow Phoenix is going to go down. They do have the Rift Herald available. So they're going to do this to get the first tower. Probably put as many plates as possible in the Poke Express pocket. And then they may rotate over to this dragon, which is going to spawn very shortly. Yeah, it's up in 15 seconds. Nice. Poke Expo is able to pick up a lot of the a lot of that gold from those plates. Rift Herald used for one charge. I com I think it's completely fine when they when teams do that. Because what you're basically doing is you're spending it for the you're spending it for gold. You're basically trading uh, trading that that objective for gold and then also if you have prio like you do right now and then one member down uh, and still being able to pick up the dragon i think it's completely fine oh oh yone is on the bot lane so while shadow phoenix is on the dragon they're putting down the pressure on the bot side and pokey pro is using Whoa. the cool and trying to keep himself away but here comes the feather storm and valentine is going to 1v1 for it just to pick up the kill and put some gold into his own pocket Oh. So taking the objective and the one for one kill right now is Michigan Blue, but Zaya wanting to accelerate, getting onto the Gale Force this game instead of the um, Kraken Slayer. So using that extra mobility to try to avoid these Gragas barrels, to avoid the Wukong ultimates, and to avoid these gauges, and ultimately keep themselves alive, which they weren't able to do so well in game one. Yep. So a little bit of a different story, even if it is a similar draft. And then uh, Zaya. Yeah, that's not that's not a bad play at all for Zaya. He's trying to go ahead and try to ramp up his his damage. He's going for the Gale, uh, like you said, the Gale Force. Uh, but Akali suffering as in that's another thing too that could help out breaking down, hurt, trying to hurry up and end this laning phase is putting as in on a side lane where he could go ahead and farm up slowly and comfortably, try to try to manipulate the waves to where he stays close to his turret while his the rest of his team tries to make make plays on the opposite sides of the map to try to get them in, uh, in back into this game because Akali won two items she's going to be able to execute Poke X Pro anytime she catches them so that's a potential move here in the yeah. bot lane though but right now the question is just getting there but here comes the onslaught of shadows lands on Tsunami is going to oh. keep the fear but not able to land him but here comes Pizza Hoot and the double teleport on the backside Gragas is stepping forward landing a massive Whoa. damage onto the bot laners as Soraka goes down pretty low here comes Pizza Hoot on the backline with the fate <laughs> sealed and seals the fate of two more and uses the E to get away create some space meanwhile Shadow Phoenix just kind of mitigates the damages in the mid lane with the Akali and the four for zero kill is onto Michigan Blue they are running away with this early game with a massive gold lead at 15 minutes yeah, the Utah State trying to make the plays, trying to make the moves, take advantage 
or whatever misplay they can find but unfortunately Michigan Blue is on another timing this game and they are truly running away with the 4k up expanded summoners from the top side Olaf unable to get a kill for for the TP down on the bot side oh maybe some action again yeah Kali using that perfect execution thinking they're gonna go in and make something happen um, but I mean just with that sustain on the Yone, it's just a little bit too much and Asin just doing the best he can Trying to bait something out. Soraka is nearby, but Soraka is not going to create any kind of kill pressure And Akali's ultimate is down so not going to be able to get that R2 execution that they want to be able to pop whoever They're going for but Yone seven massive kills right now at 7-0-3 Definitely going to be a problem in this game, but I mean the green light or the uh, I guess the silver lining is all of the gold is pretty much on that Yone. Yeah, there's a little bit on Gragas and on Wukong, but Yone is going to be the number one. So if you can make your plays anywhere where Yone is not, that's going to be their key back into victory. Exactly. And unfortunately, they do not have much lockdown for the Yone either. So if if one misplay... Oh, look. Yeah, there it is. Fifth business just getting oh. a little bit. needs to stick his nose into someone else's business. That's the wrong place to be. <laughs> is he gets blown up by the casket by overstepping and it's just usu trying to be proactive and make those plays to get themselves back in but they're just not working out or they're taking a little bit too long for it to happen like we we saw them step up and then they just kind of waited and if you don't kind of yeah. get that kill going early on it's not going to be good but look at this valentine is able to kite away uses the guilt himself alive doesn't even have to use the ultimate oh of course a flash the knock up though he should always fall victim to that too. A little bit of lazy rotating. You want to go ahead and get in there, get right back to mid lane. You think it's safe, but Yone having the third proc of his Q, able to dash in and force the flash out of Valentine. And look at that, Pokex Pro stepping up yet again to put the damage down. Kayamaya needs to go back, get the reset on the oh. Soraka. But here comes Azen, steps forward but does not hit the Shuriken. Gets the perfect execution, oh. gets the second one, but there's the movement speed. He ends up going back and look at that shield. He's taking just a little oh. bit of help and Azen, the 0 and 4 Akali with the outplay, a perfect outplay with that perfect execution. Gets a massive shutdown. So with a thousand gold in Akali's pocket, they are recalling to the bank and they are back in this game, baby. Dark Seal has two stacks. Let me see what he's gonna go for. He's going for a Morello Namicon. Okay. I'm not too mad at that. Akali, once once she has a second item, she's able to take out squishies easily. So Yo needs to be careful. If he doesn't get if if he if he doesn't get the exact trade he needs, Akali could really take advantage and punish him. He was at half health. He thought he could go ahead and take over. Unfortunately cannot. And like you said, perfect execution. On to the Yone, big bank. Yeah, I'm oh, surprised man. that Yone ended up turning back around. He went back into that fight to try to push his luck, um, but he might have been able to kind of get himself out through the, the jungle. I mean, if there's anyone you don't want to put the gold on, it's the Akali, right? Yeah. When you have the Akali and the Zaya, it's basically pick the worst of your two poisons, so you can think maybe he was trying to avoid that. But, I mean, maybe just... Um, um, I don't even know if I can say it's a little bit of an outplay. It just feels like a massive outplay to be that far ahead, and they give over the 1v1 solo kill. Yeah, well, Pizza Who was low on health, so I, I guess you could you, you could say it was it was unfortunate timing where he oh, met the Kali. Oh, already look at that! As it steps forward, oh, doesn't have the Shuriken. The perfect execution, the second round does not land on him. Um, but meanwhile, Bazinga bring in the top side, going pound for pound with Low the Man. But with that damage and with the cooldown onto the Kali, Pizza Who's going to be able to step back. They're going to be able to secure their third dragon of the game and get one step closer to Cloud Soul to get that movement speed they need to dodge all these abilities. Oh, but, yeah. man, it's just so close. You wouldn't expect it to be that close, but I guess that just shows how powerful an Akali can be once they get a couple items under their belt. Yeah, and then, I mean, kudos to Akali. It's just just the way that she was moving around, able to dodge out some of the Qs, really taking advantage of those trades and those little skirmishes. Uh, as in showing that he's no pushover, even though he was down for, he was down for deaths, his his turret got taken away real quick. He was bullied all through the early game. He's showing that he he's still he's still in it to win it, and he's looking he's looking to match the Yone at every moment. Incredibly well done by Azin and Utah State. Uh, let's see what they could do with that little pep in their step, because I know that's got to give them some confidence. 
Seeing seeing the Kali take over on uh, on those fights and the uh, with the Yon, that, that that would give me confidence. Oh yeah, that make you feel a little bit uh, more pressure free. And if you don't feel that pressure as much, you're less likely to make those mistakes and force those bad engages. But Pokéx Pro steps up a little bit too much. Uses the dash and the Gale Force to get away. So fifth business, not even forced to use his ultimate to get those really important cooldowns off of the Lucian. Um, doesn't look like they'll be able to take anything about it. I mean, Baron is up, but that's going to be a little risky at 21 minutes. Uh, Dragon, we still have a pretty long cooldown on that. So right now, we're kind of just farming around jungle objectives and just kind of fighting over that vision control to set up for the next big play. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Baron could be taken. Uh, Baron cannot be taken, I don't think. Oh. I love seeing when I'm wrong. All right. Yeah. Oh. I mean, they're just stepping up and clearing that wave. Oh, no. The Zynga yeah. brings stepping up for the Akali right here. Is he going to try to 1v1? Puts down the damage. Does get the phase rush. He's able to oh. move out. So massive chunk from Bazinga Brain onto the Akali. As in trying to get whatever kill he could potentially get. You saw he used his uh, rocket belt. Looking to take advantage of any single moment. Seems to be It seems to be the Utah State mentality there. They really liked punishing any mistake that they they have had it to them here in the mid lane kind of just dancing around we're just waiting for objectives oh is he gonna yeah. go for it and they're just pushing the ways back and forth they're basically just trading his minions over and over again but here comes the shuriken but he's going to oh, oh the body slam flash is going to fail and the q uh, flash is going to fail as well he is silenced but he does have the ultimate available there goes the r2 execution but Soraka will there to help out. There's the exhaust as well, and the Whoa. cask is too late. But while they draw two members to the bot lane, remember, Azen does have the teleport available. They're going to be on this Baron, and it is falling very fast. Here comes the Man on the backside, and Fifth Business gets onto the backside as well. They're trying to fight front to back team fight very well. But here comes Palantine. It's able to get around them with the Gale Force to get that Feather Storm. Shadow Phoenix trying to get a kill for himself. Can he just get one more auto onto the Hecarim? He does not. And Pizza, he oh. doing his best to fight it out. But that looks like an across the board ace for USU. And an unlikely scenario. They pull themselves back. They get the shutdown on the Pizza Hoot yet again. They pull them off the Baron and they find the angle to take the lead in this game. Utah State again. That was, well, actually, no, that wasn't really a Michigan Blues uh, mistake. That was 100% a play by Utah State University. As in saw that, that he was able to pick up the kill onto Gragas. Soraka running all the way down to help him out, give him those last bit of heals to be able to execute him. So Gragas goes down. Now Raka is running full-fledged into the Baron. They saw they could take it. They, they saw that they could stop it, I mean, from Michigan Blues' hands. Being up a member, the teleport being up, recalls, heals, gets back there, and then completely steamrolls the fight. Incredibly well done by Utah State. Now up on the gold, not by too much, but still a way better story than it was about four or five minutes ago. I just got to give a shout out to a couple of members right now of USU. Kaya Maya, I'm having the confidence in the team to go around the Baron to step down and assist the Akali in that kill to pick it up on Bazinga Brain. And yeah. you also got to give a shout out to Valentine right there because he ended up going so deep to land that Featherstorm and put the damage down. He ended up yeah. basically flashing on the other side of the enemy. And I mean, that's either big brain play or that's just blood in his eyes. I'm not sure what exactly it was, but it overall just did really good wonders. For, um, for USU to kind of get on that back line and clean up that fight in a great scenario. Pokéx Pro does step forward to get a little bit of damage down onto Valentine, but Kai and I are going to be able to sustain them up. And with the Baron and Power and Minions, are going to push him down. Blue Side does lose their first turret. Even though they do have the Baron and Power Minions, they have four people, five people hanging around the mid lane. They're going to be looking for this dive. Good oh, business yeah. steps up. There's oh. the dash, there's the Gale Force out of the way, but even before the tidal wave comes off, Nami is going to fall down. Bazinga Brain steps up, but there are massive cooldowns. And look at that, Hecarim might not have a way out of this game. The heal is coming out of Soraka to keep him alive. Oh. So far, one kill on that tower dive. Pokéx Pro and Fengwa being punished for stepping up a little bit too far. But look at that root from the Zaya and the Feathers being able to stop Pizza Hoot in their tracks as they're just relentless in this mid lane push with these uh, Baron Empowered minions. And look at that Gale Force forward oh. from Valentine putting down the damage onto Yone. But here comes Shadow Phoenix stepping forward. Here comes the Akali for the assassination. Has the R2 to step up forward yet again. Gets the auto attack and a double kill for Azen. Meanwhile, under the tower, 
Owa oh, has that. Ragnarok going forward just steps through everyone to pick up a kill for himself. And that's three members set down on the side of Michigan Blue. They're going to move down to the jungle. They're going to clean up their camps. They're going to go back and spend their gold. And what a massive gold swing momentum shift as they march down the mid lane yet again. There are only two people there to defend. Gragas, very low cooldown on that ultimate. Will not have it available just quite in time to be able to clean this up. But they're going to take down that inhibitor oh. tower. But we have 10 seconds on the death timers right now of the members of Michigan Blue. Are they going to step up? Are they going to stay too long? They're stepping forward onto the inhibitor tower. It is ticking down very slowly. Bubble Lance onto the we Hecarim. Get out. But fifth business has finished his business with that auto attack on the inhibitor. Oh, the man is slow. He does not have Ragnarok. And here comes Mazinga Break stepping forward. He does have the folks of cast available. The rest of the team is Whoa. there. He dashes forward, pops them backwards. Here comes Kaya Myra with the damage. Going to fall down, Pokex Pro steps forward. They get the kill onto Kyra and Myra and the double kill onto the Soraka. So oh. being able to take off two of those Barons is going to be huge. The rest of the members are recalling in this wave. And here comes the Oracles does not see oh. him in time. So they're not able to stop that recall. Ooh. What an explosive series of events. Yeah, Utah State able to capitalize on those skirmishes, and that, that's what I was saying in the champ select. I was like, maybe they're going for champions that they feel a lot better skirmishing with because they had the better back, uh, they had the better front to back type of play style, but unfortunately, it did not work. Michigan Blues Chaos was what caused them to come back into the game and win, and now it's looking like. Is, and now it's looking like Utah State's the one that's getting better, uh, the the better part of these skirmishes. Olaf just running amok, Akali able to go into in front of everyone's face and uh, pick up two kills and on the carries, no less. And then again, back to the gold, uh, the 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 gold being spread out on all across Utah State's team, and it being all in the pockets of Yon. The only person who has a gold advantage is Yon, and that was before the fight. Now, after the fight, it's gotten, it, it's increased almost double. Olaf, not the person you really want to pick off, but they went for it. Ragnarok's going to be able to come up by the next objective. I think they, oh. Gale Force forward, flashes over the tidal wave, puts down the damage, wow. and Valentine going big man mode, but here comes Shadow Phoenix on the backside. I think the ultimate is available. Yes, the Featherstorm is available for Valentine as he's being sustained up by the Soraka. Going to fall with the ultimate available. It might have just barely come off a cooldown. But meanwhile, Lo-Fi the man is on the backside. They're trying to take down Pizza Hoot. And here comes a recall on the side. Pizza Hoot trying to put down the damage. And he gets the execute. You know, he does not. He flashes forward to try to get the Q. But the dash from Macaulay keeps him alive. And there's a follow-up oh. from the E. That execute damage is just too much. Shadow Phoenix is doing his best to be the one-man salvage team clearing out the minions from the waves they do not have a mini wave it's going to be too long for it to get there so they're just going to go to the top side they're going to pick up the gold that's standing on the map for them and bazinga brain is just waiting under the last turret that his team has to keep himself alive it's just everywhere all over the place it is so messy and usu loves to thrive in the chaos everything everywhere all at once that's what <laughs> that's what it looked like but Again, the team fights are going in the way of Utah State. The skirmishes. Once the main team fight is done, and then it spreads out all across the map when people are trying to run away, people are trying to save themselves. That's where Michigan Blue was taking over in the in game one, and now Utah State's taking over. They had so much standing gold to come back, and that's exactly what they did. They have come back. They are 3K gold up. Now they got all the momentum. Mid inhibitor down, so it's gonna help out that much more with objectives, and then the wards. The vision is 100% on the side. Oh, it's getting cleared out. But in doing that, they know exactly where they're at. I was going to say the wards, the vision for Utah State shows that they really are macro, a macro type of team. Oh. Yeah, and they're stepping we forward. Go. Tidal uh, wave. Right. Yeah, very interesting tidal wave right there. That might have been a misclick. Um, Bazinga Brain, but able to proc the Baron to put down some early damage to dissuade the team from doing that. They're going to be waiting on their cooldowns right now. Uh, Dragon should be coming up pretty soon as well. So we'll see if any of the teams send a member over there to take it while they posture uh, with their waves in the mid lane. Pokéx Pro oh. definitely struggling a little bit more this game, but look at Pizza Hoot. He's able to use his E to dash forward, but now they know where he's at. 
Fifth business pops his E to get that movement speed, but they're just gonna move into the jungle. They're gonna take all the camps that they can. They're gonna secure this dragon. And with Baron being up, I'm interested to see if Michigan Blue is gonna pull the trigger on this one. It was a full team rotation oh. over to that dragon. Looks like Hit they are. Moment right here. As in going solo into the mid lane. Well, they get there in time. The Baron is just ticking away so fast. 3,000 health, 2,000 health, and there's the secure. Oh, this is so scary. Oh, wow. There it is, the Rocket Belt not able to interrupt the recall. Gragas is able to body slam over and get alive as well. But Logan Man and Valentine are on their way. The rest of the team not going to be able to follow up. So pretty clean Baron still from Michigan Blue, recognizing that this team was going over. That was such a good read from the team to go over there and destroy that Baron because they had the Yone, they had the Lucian, they had that damage to take it down fast enough to stop them from being able to get the double objective. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was complimenting Utah State on how the way they were able to concede and look for other parts of the map to take advantage of. And that's exactly what yeah, that's exactly what Michigan Blue did. So incredibly well done. We're looking at a good match. But Utah State still in the driver's seat of this game. They got Michigan Blue's got to be careful on what they do with this with this uh, with this with these Baron buffs. They got to make sure they take advantage of it as much as they can because they still have two inner turrets on the map. Uh, Utah State does so potentially making a 4-1 4-0-1 type of situation can help them out. Oh uh, Pizza Hoot and fires try, the business uh, I was gonna say try, what? try try to let Pizza Hoot try to try, try to isolate Pizza Hoot with one member on the team because I think that's the way they're gonna be able to take advantage of Pizza Hoot's uh, uh, lead here we go yeah, and look at this flank, a huge flank from Azen on the backside. Are they going to be able to take him down before anything happens? Look at that oh. huge damage on the Shadow Phoenix. But there's the Zani's Hourglass to put him on free. He gets executed by Pizza Hoot's uh, passive on the E, but he's just putting down so much damage. Gets the follow-up Q, but CC immune is low. The man as he steps up, and he's putting down so much damage on the Pizza Hoot. There goes the shield bow to proc. Here comes his shield. He's going to be able to get up and away. Dashes out, but he would just dash right back to his death. And here's Fifth of Business to get him down. But Zinga Brain is being able to kite away right now. Pokéx Pro trying to put down the damage, but does not have the items necessary for him to make any kind of meaningful impact. As USU ends up going four for one, sorry, three for one so far, only losing as, and they're going to be able to take this inhibitor. I don't think they'll be able to take too much more right now. But the rest of the junglers there, they're going to push forward. 15 oh, second death timer on Shadow Phoenix. Fangwa's on his way up as well. Yeah, there's no way they can push this down. No, unfortunately they can't. They might have stuck around too long. Ooh, Zaya flash getting expended. Yeah, didn't have the other abilities off cooldown. Bazinga Brain just had his ultimate. The explosive cash just came off cooldown at that moment as well. Oh, I do not like that teleport. And look at that. Azim being chunked down. That half HP already being knocked out does dodge one of the Qs from Azen, so he's able to mitigate a lot of that damage. Look at that two-level lead from Bazinga Brain. I yeah, really like seeing Bazinga Brain on, like, not a carry roll per se, but being able to facilitate this damage. It feels like he's so much more active this game than he was in that Jax game. Yeah, but in that Jax game, he was actually able to, to take out Squishies, whereas now the Squishies are surviving. And uh, although he is able to, al although he has been able to extend team fights and help out his team that that damage that they had in the first game is is, is kind of it's kind of being needed this game Sai is able to survive a lot in these team fights but i was gonna say pizza who pizza who has teleport up akali wasted her, her teleport going there in the bot lane trying to take advantage of whatever she could ends up getting uh knocked down less than half and has to recall i should i i I can't say this enough. I I think Pizza Who needs to go on the side lane, solo, and then uh, have his team get proactive on the other on the other part of the map, which could be kind of scary since they need a pizza they need Pizza Who so much in these team fights. But if they can like dance around, oh uh oh. Yeah, the map is just so dark for them right now. Look at Yoni oh, yeah. pushed up so far, three to four members right now, and they're gonna get him on this Gromp. 
Meanwhile, the mid lane is going to be pushed in. He does have the E to get away safely, but Azin is here. Is he going to use the R to get away? But he tags Ooh. Azin with the R, so he's not going to be able to get out. Uses the stopwatch for perfection right now uh -oh. to block the R2 on the execution. And we have huge damage on the back line. Shadow oh. Phoenix is in there creating so much space, so much room. And here's Fifth Business. He's going to fall eventually to Pokegrow. And low the man on Valentine, right? Forced to walk away. They're going to be able to get that blast going up and over, but Zbindarian is just there. Ragnarok is on cooldown, and here's the body slam forward. There's the slow. Blow the man forced to turn around and put some damage down, but here comes the speed up from Fangwa. Shadow Phoenix goes up, gets the slow as well. There's the body slam. Shield is popped, and Brazilian Brain gets the shield for himself, and they're going to be able to take down Lo-Fi as well. That's a four for nothing on the side of Michigan Blue, and it looks like the Cloud Soul is theirs for the taking. Oh yeah, Soul is gonna be able to oh, be picked Yone's, up. Yone's oh, on the Zaya. Yone's on the Zaya. Yone gets the shutdown <laughs> off screen. And while we're looking at the Soul being taken, Pizza who able to get that three stack off of the Gromp pit, steps forward, lands the combo onto Valentine who did not have Flash or the ultimate available and just takes him down to get the clean ace for Michigan Blue. And just like that, hot potato, we got another gold lead switch. 1,000 gold <laughs> onto the side of Michigan Blue at 36 minutes. We're getting to that fun point of the game where we're all five or six items, and it all comes down to execution yet again. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, the, the game two is so pivotal in this series, I think, because it's going so back and forth, so back and forth. It's got to be tiring to be getting through these games. You do not want all of this work to be for nothing. Either team, Utah State, back and forth, back and forth. Oh, yeah, the dash forward doesn't land the body sign, but he's able to get the explosive cast, and that means Soraka is not one uh -oh. longer for this world. And here comes Shadow Phoenix. He has the movement speed to get the Cyclone, gets the first knockup, not going to be able to get the second one. As Lo-Fi is on the bottom side of the map, he does have teleport available, but Zaya is just barely coming out of base. And that's just going to be a Baron over to the side. Bazinga Break forced to use his flash for that play, but without a Soraka, they do not have that utility to make that fight happen. Nope, oh, Soraka going down is going to be able to take away all the healing to get them right back into it. They have to concede, and unfortunately, there's no other play other than just conceding it. And now Michigan Blue getting the upper hand. Whoa. Baron buff yet again. That's two Barons. A two Baron game. Yeah, I, I, I would not want to lose this game at all. <laughs> this is so grueling for the players. Incredibly well done. Utah State can defend it off. Will this all be for nothing? Yeah, Pizza Hoot on the side lane. Pokey X Pro is doing really well. Um, like He was really far behind in the beginning of the game, but now he's got his items, so he can step up and do some damage. And there oh, yeah. is Lo-Fi, man. He's going to get caught up, forced to pop that uh, Ragnarok defensively, so he's not going to be able to be that menace on the back line in these fights. And they're going to be able oh. to take down this tower. When that tower goes, are they going to be able to pull the go button? USU not looking for anything aggressive just yet, but Zingabring is on the mid lane to get that tower. And Pizza Hoot... Dashes forward with his ease, able to pop right back out. But there's oh. a massive rolling. And look at Valentine forced oh. to use his Gale Force defensively with the heal as well. Big cooldowns being forced out just with that Coleman. And here's the wow. damage on the low man. They know the Ragnarok was popped defensively. So they take the engage. They take that lazy defense as they step forward on the Azin as well. They're going to take the inhibitor first. Baron oh, should be off it. Here comes Azin. He's able to get the big damage on the Shadow Phoenix. He's just waiting in the shroud right now, uses the R2 defensively, but that means Pokex Man is able to dash in as he wants. Pizza Hoot steps forward as well, does have the GA available, and his Mazinga Brain just explodes Valentine. Pizza Hoot on the back line puts down the damage as well, and they're gonna be able to mark that down. They're taking down the enemy one by one. Utah State just trying to hang on. The onside of Shadows is popped. He goes forward into the middle of five, and he's just doing his best to put down the damage, but the rest of the team gonna be able to limp away as Azin is the only one left remaining from Utah State. He steps forward, tries to put down some damage, but there's the ace from Michigan Blue. There's the Nexus kill. There is game oh two in 39 minutes, and just like that, Utah State has their backs against the wall. Wow, what Utah a game. State. <laughs> Yo, that incredibly well done by both teams with Michigan Blue getting the better of it. Where, where I saw Michigan Blue be a lot more sloppy in game one than Utah State was. Here they cleaned it up and they showed what happens when they're on their A game. They, Although it was going back and forth, it just looked like Michigan Blue. It looked like Michigan Blue was was 100% in the driver's seat, but oh man, Utah State that bat. There's just some times where they get like a little lazy in low parts of the game, where 
right there, it looked like they should have potentially engaged or they should have completely conceded to where they could form or they could have like a formation to set up for a team fight, get better angles. Oh man, but Michigan Blue game two, and like you said, Utah State back against their wall. What are they gonna do on this next draft? What is gonna be the what's the pocket pick that's gonna come out that's gonna be game changer? Because red side Michigan Blue. They know exactly how they're going to draft, and they know exactly what they want against this Utah State team. Oh, man, I'm I'm a little bit at a loss for words. What, what do you think? What do you think for draft? I, I think you have to – if you're going to take blue side, you have to either pick Wukong R1 or you have to ban it away. I don't think you yeah. want to leave that up because Shadow Phoenix is just able to make so many plays on this Wukong to get his team going. Um, I mean, you see that there's big damage or big uh, abilities, like solo – kill potential from as in um and he's basically losing from being over aggressive he gets punished once or twice and then falls behind and then he's forced to climb back and usu did that they were able to climb back but by that time we got to 30 35 minutes and that's where the game just got completely flipped on its head um bazinga brain on the engage gragas i like seeing him on that i don't think he can let bazinga brain have the gragas again um, I think you need to get away from the Soraka. I think you need to get to something that gives you a little bit more movement speed or to give your team a little bit more agency in these team fights. Because um, Soraka is the kind of champion that you pick if it's going to be like a really long drown out battle. Like if you're playing against like a Scion Maokai or something along those lines. But if you're getting popped by a Cask, by Cyclone, by Yone, I mean, Yone's. Like, Soraka won't be able to get many rotations off of their heal. So I'd love mm. to see something, you know, like you said earlier, the Lulu being good, maybe a Karma. Yeah. Maybe even something with a little bit more CC so they can lock down these problem members or they're able to um, kind of disengage a little bit more effectively. Yeah, it looked like they were getting the better end of those skirmishes, but, man, Michigan Blue able to take over the game, able to really hone in on what their team fights are are made of. And uh, man, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know what Utah State could do. I, uh, Lulu, are they gonna? Are they gonna dive in into the skirmish again? I think they had a better. I think they had a better time doing the doing doing the other type of comp where it was a little bit more traditional. Mm-hmm. And uh, Vagar having having the the execute. I think they should go on a oh, man. But Akali was on the execute as well. Yeah, I don't know. Lulu definitely better, and maybe a jungler, a different jungler as well. Hecarim. I just felt like his presence wasn't really there as far as like game changing or being a damage that could really turn the team fight. Oh uh, man. Yeah. You but well, you just, said it all. <laughs> I, I saw like Valentine was just looking for these aggressive plays, was just stepping yeah. up, putting down the damage, looking for those kills to start the the match off or to start the fight off. I like mm-hmm. to see them pick teams that enable that. I like to see you know, like the Karma with the movement speed, or maybe even like a zillion, so that way they can revive and let yeah. Zaya get off multiple like rotations of spells. Just something that gives Zaya a little bit go more go button, or yeah. maybe even something a little different. Maybe like a Zeri that they're able to jump on with the the move speed. I I don't know. I'd like to see uh definitely something needs to change. I don't think you can let the same exact draft go through for a third game in a row. Mm-hmm. Um. And I mean, yeah. let's see what they do. Uh, yeah. Right now, they got to be getting themselves together. They got to get that mental reset. I'm sure yeah. they're talking about it extensively just as much as we are. So, oh, with yeah. that being said, I think it's a good time for us to go to an intermission. But <laughs> as the teams are getting together, we're going to prep for game three, get you guys in the lobby, get us in the draft, and we will be back shortly. So, make sure you stick around as Michigan Blue. 2-0. They're just one game away from knocking off the undefeated number one seed and securing their place in the championship match. Will they be able to secure victory in game three or will USU be able to start the reverse sweep? Stick around to find out.
All right, fantastic, Fat Man. We are here in Game 3. We are on set point as Michigan Blue steps up. USU opts to take blue side yet again, and they're opening up with the Recon ban yet again. I don't see a Senna ban from last time. Let's see what kind of adjustments they're going to make as they go into this draft. What would you like to see from them? Ah uh, man, as far as ban goes, as far as bans goes, like uh, they got a they got a first pick Wukong or ban it completely. That that's been that's been able to help them set up so much. That's been been able to help them disengage so much, uh, or and then also potentially pick a better jungler, so one with more utility. So like a Sejuani. Um, uh, I get maybe uh, no, I wouldn't think Greg is too much, but <laughs> but or uh, if if they want damage coming from their jungle, uh, I would probably even say like a Lee Sin Graves situation. But I don't know what that jungle what what their jungler plays. So uh, if they're if they want utility, I would I would pref 100% in a Mumu Maokai. Uh, Sejuani, Zach, like those type of champions, something that's super CC heavy that can help set up for uh, Utah State. Because it looks like they're both very similar teams. They want to skirmish, they want to damage, they want to really go for it. So there it is. Same thing happening yet again. Zaya yep. first picked on blue side. They believe in the power of the Zaya. Let's see if they adjust that enchanter support to be a little bit more engaging. But they're going to opt for the Gragas here. Wow. So possibly handshaking over the Wukong or just allowing that blind pick Gragas. So that means something's going to change. Either they're mm. going to let Wukong over to the side of USU or they're going to get away from the Lucianami. Do they have something that beats Wukong? Is it, uh, does Elise, does Elise take over like completely? Elise could. At least could, but they're opting to keep it the same. Whoa. So that could be a Gragas jungle. Maybe they're flexing it. I'm really surprised they're getting away from what's been so successful for them in the past. Yeah. I mean, giving them the Wukong, it just allows with the Cyclone, with the knockups for Zaya to get those feathers down so that way they can get the root, the secondary engage. Uh, it's it's mm. hard for me to say. I mean, I'm a big proponent of if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah. But maybe they had a plan for it. Maybe they have planned for Ooh, and a Mumu. Ooh, I like that, but Wukong was up. You should have just took the Wukong. Uh, that, that could be a mummy in the bot lane. Mummy oh, lock on yeah. the fish, and then with the oh. secondary engage. Yeah, that's very true. A move, move the bandit, the new, the new way the bandit shots works. Yeah, that could help. That could help out Zaya set up all the damage that she's been so desperate to do. <laughs> Unless they're playing five-dimensional chess right now, and they're flexing the Mumu into jungle and support, and then they move it back. That's a a jump. Huh? <laughs> huh? That went all the way down to the wire, so we'll see if there's something in chat to say it's something different. But for right now, it's going to be a Janna without splash art. Thank you so much, draft lol dot d a w e dot g g. Mm. Uh, <laughs> no free shadows. Free shadow. Free no free shadow. <laughs> but oh man, this draft. I don't. I. I'm truly interested to see if Utah State is just saying like, yo, screw it. Let's just do this. Hey, let's just pick comfort champions hey i like playing a mumu hey i like playing jana or if this is them actually making strategic moves and saying all right this is what we're gonna do we're gonna do a mumu we're gonna do jana they're obviously gonna go for the wukong but wukong going so late might might have thrown them off mm -hmm. and that that's something that when you have oh they're taking away the olaf so that was hard for bazinga bring them probably deal with up in the top lane they want him to get on a little bit more of a lead but uh yeah, that's that's truly interesting to see uh, Utah State. Because if you come in with a flushed out plan, ah, and there goes the Wukong ban, so they definitely do not want to see it. Yeah, it's uh, very possible Gragas flexes into that jungle anyway. So yeah, doing really well to kind of five head them. They're taking away the Akshan, which is kind of that uh, marquee champion for Azin in the mid lane. That's his solo queue champion. He just kind of solo queue stomps people with that. But Silas mm -hmm. is available with some pretty good ultimates to steal uh, with the cask, with the Sejuani ultimate. Um, yeah. And Silas could do something, but then again, you would be blind picking the Silas. And with stuff like Cassidy still available, I'm not quite sure if uh, a Silas blind pick is the way to go. Yeah, and then also Aesol. 
new Aesol is just so strong. I'm surprised we haven't even seen it. Nar, that's a good that's a good neutral pick. That's the neutralizer of all neutralizers. And yep, Silas. Oh, is it gonna see the Yone again? Melee versus melee? Uh, running it back. That's what we saw last game. Um, but I mean, if you pick a Yone, that means you're giving Silas Yone ult as well. Yeah. <laughs> you really gotta stomp on the you really gotta stomp on the Silas to 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 make sure he doesn't take that take that ultimate. All right, so that's what it is. I didn't see any changes, nothing, no mistakes. Whoa, man, Wukong was there. Did Utah State have like a plan and they just stuck to it, even getting thrown for a loop that Wukong was left up? Uh, possibly, I don't know. It's hard to read. I wish we could interview their team as well. <laughs> if, it, if it ends up going there, if it goes to game five, we can definitely ask them at the very end. Like, Both, right? <laughs> a you guys had a solid mental to pick that after the first three games. <laughs> if um, this works, if this works, then, then hey, great yeah. job. Great job drafting. <laughs> I'm, I'm still just super surprised that they ended up deviating from their success. I guess with Bazinga Brain being so successful on the Gragas, they probably figured they wanted to take that first. And they felt like it was more important that he were to pick something like Gragas to be successful than it were for the jungler to be on Wukong another time. Because um, we did see a massive change from Bazinga Brain's performance when he was on Bazinga Belly's Gragas. <laughs> yeah, that that's for sure. He definitely was a lot better at facil facilitating in those team fights. Oh, uh, man. But Nar coming up. So he's going to... So low the man again. I think having the better of the top lane. Fifth business... On the Amumu, that's going to be interesting. And then also, Michigan Blue not having the Wukong, having the Sejuani. That's going to be interesting to see how they're going to path, how they're going to deal with the team fights. Amumu uh, does have that AoE stun slash snare. And then Sejuani has herself in AoE. Um, only one person can get stunned, but the slow that comes with it. Yon having a game-changing ultimate, but... Explaining all all those ultimates on Michigan Blue side, Silas can steal every single one of them and then also just flip it on their head. Uh, well, uh, yeah, Sejuani I'm interested. Also, I'm interested. <laughs> Sejuani also has triple melee on their team between the Gragas and the Yone, so that just means whoever That's they right. lock up, they can lock down very hard. Uh, yep. So the, you might see Sejuani passing more towards that mid top side to get the game going, maybe moving Lucian and Nami to their own devices. Uh, but, I mean, we'll see. We'll see if Amumu looks for that level 3 gank in the bot lane like they did in the last couple games. Um, or if they're just going to farm it out. Amumu's the kind of person to lock a lot of people in the place. And with Yone and Lucian being so high mobility, that might be what you need to get your team over the edge, is being able to lock them down so Zaya can get the damage off. Yeah, exactly. And then just the AoE Amumu ultimate. Goes ahead and just shuts everything down, especially if you're if you're in the jungle fighting. He just tunnels the whole section away, or he just grabs the whole section and shuts them down. Jana, though, I mean, the skirmishes they tr they're gonna try to Jana, oh, Kia Mia. They probably asked them, "Hey, what champion are you gonna be able to get people off of Valentine?" And uh, Kia Mia might have responded, "Hey, I'm Jana." <laughs> The 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 tornado, the monsoon, shooting every people everybody away, and then having the healing on, on top of that. But Nami and Nature can kind of stop that with just with the tidal wave. You miss time that monsoon, you get knocked up, it disrupts. Yeah, uh, this one I'm not too sure who's the clear favorite. I'm actually liking Utah State's comp a little bit more. Uh, if they get the Narbar time correctly, they pair it with Curse of the Sad Mummy. Yeah. Silas is able to get those big R's with the cast, with the Fate Seal, just being able to take away everything. Um, I mean, it's going to be a big play. Silas is something that Azen has played a lot in solo queue. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what kind of level of persistency he could do because Pizza Hoot has been locking it down, holding his own. But it's been champions that have been a little bit abnormal for Azen, minus the Akali. Akali had some level of comfort going into it. Um, but, I mean, we'll see. It's, you could talk about it all you want, but it still all comes down to execution. Like we said, we've been hot potatoing the leads for the last two games <laughs> every five minutes or so. Um, so it'd be kind of cool to see a team just take the lead and kind of run with it. But 
then what kind of fun would that be, right? Yeah. <laughs> so if you guys are interested in sticking around and watching Game 3, will Michigan Blue secure their place in the finals? Will USU begin their reverse sweep? Stick around to find out on the Rift. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are on match point right now as Michigan Blue is up 2-0 in this series. And we see right now it looks like a level one invade. The team is waiting for Sejuani to step up, possibly place that war before going back for an Oracles. And we might see oh, yeah. a little bit of a fiesta here. I want to see a fiesta. I want them to throw everything in the kitchen sink. You know what I mean? Don't leave anything. Don't 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 leave anything to what if or what, what we could have, what we should have. Just try everything and anything to make sure that this series continues. That's 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 the mentality I would have if I was Utah State. I mean, straight out of Zootopia with the try everything mentality, man. <laughs> oh yeah. What? Well, looks like they're gonna keep it safe though. Five point. All right, that's fine. That's fine. I'll move more obviously. That. They didn't see the rest of the team move over. Like Nara did step up to throw out his boomerang. 
but you didn't see like anyone else from there. So the team's still holding their five point, not feeling confident enough to go in and push vision. Um, and we're just going to go with a standard start. So nothing cheesy in these finals. We're going to see just pound for pound, blow for blow action in game three. And if we were alive, it'd be like, crowd, let me hear it. I can't talk right now, but crowd, are you excited? Let's hear it. No, but we don't got that. Woo! <laughs> Don't Gotta need my imagination, bro. Woo! Hasn't stepped <laughs> forward and takes a massive damage uh -oh. trade. Uh, a lot of those little caster creeps are just putting down the deeps as well. Yeah, he's going to be calling for uh, fifth business to come in ASAP. You don't want to be sticking around in a melee versus melee matchup against Yon with a huge health uh, difference. Uh, and when I'm playing these melee matchups, I really like to have Doran shield. Um, just so that way I could sustain up if a trade goes wrong. Um, I mean, Doran's rig will be good. He'll be able to sustain as he's able to collect those minions. But, I mean, Yone is just going to be pressuring him again and again and again with these minion waves. Yeah, but, I mean, as you, if you're a Silas, you, you, I'm pretty sure if you're a Silas player, he understands having a disadvantage in the early levels. He understands he needs to sit back. I mean, he, he has a... Uh, Let's see, he has biscuits, so he, he completely knows that. Plus, he also has the Cosmic Insight, so he's going to be using his Teleport a little bit more freely. Oh, and look yeah, at look that. At Answer's that. right back. Yeah, being able to land all that damage without Yone being able to answer it back does have the minions to back him up as well. I mean, oh. Pokepro's got to be feeling so comfortable in this matchup, having played it three times straight. Right? <laughs> Nothing different, everything's good. Sejuani looking like he's gonna path top. Ooh. Yeah, it looks like it's just full quest. But look at this, Azen able to get the stun, but he's able to bounce back as the Yone has the E available. Shadow Phoenix steps forward, does not have the dash, does not flash on top of him to land that knock up. So they're just gonna put the pressure on him and then go back. I think they were afraid of where our mummy could be, no vision on that bot side. But meanwhile, Lo the man stepping up a little bit too far is gonna be able to get the, it's not called a frenzy, it's called get hyper. Won't be able to get that third proc to get hyper and Bazinga Brain just taking the better of these trades again and again. Yep. And then with Sejuani oh. there on a ward though. Is this where the- there dashing uh... forward. He tries to dash away, but then uses his hop to get up and away. Bumps on him like a Goomba, able to return the damage as well. And Shadow Phoenix has a very long cooldown on the erotic assault. Five more seconds is going to limp over to the Krugs as a mummy fifth business like kind of sneaks into this bot lane. Oh, sorry about that. I was looking at mid lane, mid lane, almost Ooh. as it almost gets the kill. Yeah, With quick fingers, pizza who get up. Gets... You go ahead, Ooh, go ahead, Oh, falls to that tower shot as well. But meanwhile, on the bot side, fifth business steps up. They are able to put down, and so many summer spells are being in bush. Fifth business gets the first blood onto the Lucian. They're trying to get the damage done on the Fangwa, but he's forced to flash away as well. And patience pays off My for a mummy. Guy. But meanwhile, on the top side, Shadow Phoenix steps up, lands the knockup, is able to force the flash out of Lo-Fi, but we step forward, and there's the barrel from Bazinga Brain to lock up his first kill of the game as well. Wow. All right, already back to it. Already back to the theme of the series. Back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> yeah, it's great cross map play coming from them. And Pizza Who already low HP, so it looks like he just went out of vision until the recall was completed. And then he uh, ended up coming up. Dashes forward to clear the menu waves, but Azen should be able to freeze it. He's going to step up, going to force the teleport out of Pizza Who to come back and break this freeze. So we'll see if he pulls the fifth business, if he pulls his assistance to the mid lane to really force him into a bad spot. Because if you're forced to blow your teleport to break a wave and then you end up dying again, it just feels so awful. Yeah, most definitely. It's not what you want to happen. So right here, what they're going to have to start getting proactive to do, uh, what Michigan Blue might want to do is get that comfortability and objectives. That's what they had. That's what, that's what they had earlier. Oh, oh, yeah. and there it is. Just like we mentioned, fifth business was there in the mid lane, ready and waiting. And we're going to continue the freeze yet again. Wow. 
Well done, well done by Utah State's mid laner and jungler. Ooh. Oh, Look at this fifth business is a little out of sorts. No flash on the bot laners as he steps forward. He gets hit by the bubble, and Shadow Phoenix is there, but doesn't want to catch those hands. As he ends oh, up no. just walking away, keeps his dash available. Silas is there, ready to make it a 4v3. He's going to channel back, and as Yone is approaching, I think they just kind of have to handshake this and move out. No one's going to be able to take this dragon right now as teams are just off these on these off resets. And look at that, Poke oh, wow. Pro, like knowing that something was up, not even wanting to go forward and use the dash to get his combo down. He's really careful because he knows that Mumu's in the area. Mummy's going to step back and take those Krugs for himself. And we're kind of going to be going back to normal now. Oh, yeah. I think that's I think that's a win uh, for Michigan Blue, able to to make sure that they don't get the early dragon and get that going, just because they had a member down. Even though Yon was already on his way, it could have ended so bad if they tried to get they try to force that dragon defense uh, to try to force a a defense against the dragon. But look at this, Shadow yeah. Phoenix sneaking it. Well, so they catch uh, a Mumu on the Scryer's Orb, so they're able to see that he's not in the area. He's backing. Puts on the pink board to make sure there's nothing in there. Does not walk over the Scuttle Crab, so the team might assume that he's just getting out. So they do know that he was in the area, but they don't know what he did afterwards. So Shadow Phoenix just kind of walloping away at it. A Mumu did clear his bot side, so he's going to go up to farm. Great heads up play from Shadow Phoenix. Oh, yeah. Understanding the assignment, and that's. Hey, Amumu's not there. Let me go ahead and sneak this over. And great first drag. Hexec Drake. Ability haste and attack speed. Yeah, and this is the first matchup where we've seen Lo the Man kind of struggle a little bit at the beginning. I mean, then again, he did get ganked twice within the first six minutes, so you can't really blame him for it. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, that's just kind of how the matchup goes. Uh, he steps up. He's supposed to put down all the damage. He's supposed to harass the Gragas as much as possible. And as I'm talking about all of this, I thought, oh, there's nothing Ooh. spicy in the mid lane. I don't got to worry about that. They're just trading, heavy trading so much. Yoni does not quite have that Vampiric Scepter yet or that life still for him to be able to sustain in the lane as easily as he did in the first match. Mm -hmm. um, but is looking for that first buy of the Berserker's Greaves uh, to try to get oh. that cooldown on his Q and answer his damage. But here's fifth business over the wall. Shadow Phoenix is there. Mid laners have not rotated yet. Minion Wave is being pushed off. Bazinga Break does have a little bit of mana left. And they're just going to take their win, knowing that they're going to have jungle tempo. Lo the Man is going to be able to get away with the, the hop. Meganar does expire. And oh, something happened in the bot lane. Tempo lead. Janna, Janna, no exhaust. Oh. Yeah, but Azen steps up yet again, holding his E for the follow up, forcing the Fate Seal out of the Yone, but Ooh. body blocking it as Pizza Who dies the second time this match, and Silas ends up getting his first kill of the game. Overall, oh, great wow. play from the mid jungle duo synergy of Utah State University. Yeah, it looks like they're a little bit more on timing this game than last. Azen getting the lead. Whereas he was completely on the deficit in the game before. Uh, Mumu, I thought he was going to look for a little bit of a tower dive. Gragas, no mana. Not going to be able to body slam out of it and interrupt anything. And plus he had the rift. So it was going to provide that much uh, that much more of a uh, basically wall for that turret. So they could bounce around with the turret, uh, with the turret aggro. Uh, but no, decides to go back down mid lane. Picks up a, a kill. And it looks like Utah State's in a way more comfortable situation. Let's see where they could go ahead and take the lead. The Rift Herald is the play. I wonder if they're saving it for the next dragon. I don't think it'll last that long, though. Two minutes and 40 seconds for the dragon to come up. Yeah, you really do have to hand it to Bazinga Brain right now. He was forcing his way into the jungle, so they do have vision. They can track a Mumu to know that he's bot side. Uh, allows the team to kind of push in the wave and go up in ward so they have that freedom to move around the map. But we're kind of just at a stationary point right now where teams are just farming it out. We still got a few minutes for the other dragon to come. No Baron yet. Rift Herald has been used. Mummy is just using the opportunity again and again to get these fast recalls. So it'd be really interesting to see where he puts it down and where is their priority. Who do they want the gold onto? Do they want it onto the AD carry? Do they want it onto Nar to keep that harass? Are they, do they want it on Azen, who's just being a monster on the Silas right now, putting down uh -oh. so much damage? But here's Shadow Phoenix just eating up that Fate's, uh, Fate Seal so that he's able to get away. Pizza Hoot forced to walk away, uses the Fate Seal to get out, oh. does have the shield available. Meanwhile, on the bot side, 
We have another two for two going as well. The tidal wave is forced to be used. The feather storm is used. Flash and heal both expended on the side of Valentine as well. So Lucia and Nami do have their flash available, so they are able to get on top of them and make that big hit. Shadow oh. Phoenix does walk down, but walks over a ward, so they're just going to play it safe as the rest of the team is out of vision. Oh, wow. I thought they were going to be... I thought he was still going to go for it and engage, but probably best that he doesn't. Look at Fifth Business hovering around. And Michigan Blue able to answer right back again. It, what it looked like, it was going to be a comfy lead for Utah State. Michigan Blue again able to answer back and it's the story of the series you get the lead i get the lead you get the lead i get the lead and oh man a little nice little skirmish right here nice little trade between bazinga bring and low the man yeah just trading those abilities back and forth but again and again um we just see these teams just so trade heavy they're not afraid to take these fights they know the limits of their champions very well so they're stepping up to try to make this happen. A uh, blue team does summon up the rift on the bot lanes. So they're gonna try to put the gold onto the Zaya just to get that hyper carry going. Gale Force is up on them as well. But Lo the man on the top side is just putting down damage again and again. I see pings onto the mid lane. Sejuani is in the area. So Pizza Hoot is trying to get something going. There goes Azin, he's forced to get away. Oh. Sejuani ultimate does land. There's a knock up on knock up on knock up and Shadow Phoenix giving him triplets at that point as they're going to be able to move down to this dragon that's coming up. But fifth business is waiting, is not on a war, does have ultimate available. Whereas Pizza Hoot and Shadow Phoenix do not. Fate Seal actually just came off a of cooldown right now. So at best, they're looking at a 4v3 situation. Azen has TP yeah. in about seven seconds. It is before 14 uh -oh. minutes, but he would have to go to a turret. But uh -oh. look at this massive team fight. They're stepping up, USU trying to make this fight happen, but Valentine just gets stunned like no other. Fifth Business is trying to answer the call back, does get shielded up, but he's just going to get down as he can't kite it out. Kayamaya forced to limp away, but here's Azen with the Sejuani ultimate. Does he have the damage to make something happen? He does, he slays, Pizza Hoot is able to flash away, still has the Sejuani ultimate available, I think, or it looks like it's gone. Ease forward, but misses the dash, and Kyra Meyer is not oh. gonna step up to get the shield down. Little wow. bit greedy from Azen right there to go for the follow-up. Does lose the two stacks that he had on the Dark Seal, but he was looking to push the envelope. Yeah, Michigan he was looking Blue to go ahead and add more. On that one. <laughs> yeah, he was looking to walk away with a lot more. He wanted more stacks onto that seal. He really wants to take over this game. Azen over-aggressive, though. And all for the Dragon right there. So Dragon does go onto the side of uh, Michigan Blue. And yeah, I mean... Again, I keep going back and forth. Uh, th I thought the iron, the locket on Sejuani was a little weird, but it completely made sense there. I mean, Amumu, if he gets a nice ultimate, you don't want the enemy team to really take over with low health bars on your side, so you shield up your allies. And it showed that was a great purchase by uh, by Shadow Phoenix. Helped out a lot in that team fight, able to return return some kills. And here we are in the mid lane. Uh oh. Yeah, it's like once they're able to get those ultimates, if you're able to survive that initial burst from the Amumu, or from the Amumu, then you should be okay to kind of win the rest of the fight with your spells over and over again. Oh yeah. So we do like that. But here comes Lo the Man stepping forward, does go into Meganar, does have two with him, but his team is ready and waiting. Lo the Man does get the stun against the wall, hits him with a Gnar. Bazinga Brain is trying to flash out, tries Ooh. to use the cast to create that distance, but is not able to make it happen and big kill onto Bazinga Brain with 30 second death timer and we're almost even on kills, almost dead even on gold. How did we get through. so lucky to get to cast these series of matches? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but this is a great series of great semifinals. Rift Herald able to be picked up again by uh, Utah State and uh oh! Yeah, look at all that damage on the Shadow Phoenix. Phoenix. Forced to limp away, Fate Seal was used from Azen the stolen wow. ultimate. Meanwhile, Lucian was able to push in that bot side, did take down that tower on the bottom. So if anything, it could be a trade Rift Herald for that bot lane tower. As five members strong from USU are pushing down that mid lane. They stun Pizza Hoot, there's the fate sealed. Uh -oh. As they lock him down, can they get the kill? They do as Lo the Man is able to get his second of the game. He steps oh. forward, tries to put down the damage. Tidal Wave is there to create some space. As Pokey Pro, short range 80 carry, looking to make something happen. The Rift Herald gets its second charge of the game. 
but it's 2v4 right now as Lilyman oh. nars him away in the opposite direction, but they land the knockup from the Silas. They're trying to put down the damage on the Fangwall as well. There's the Feather Storm. There's the Sun from Fifth of Business. Are they going to be able to knock him down? They do not, but it's an execute <laughs> for the Amumu as Shadow Phoenix is just trying to cut the wave instead of going in and locking up the members of the team fight. Just playing this game on a knife's edge, Utah Esports. Wow, Utah Esports getting the better of it though. And I, I was I was about to compliment Michigan Blue saying the gold lead uh, the the gold lead uh, isn't too crazy. I mean they're pretty much e dead even, and uh, the Rift Herald was used by Utah State, so Utah State able to come back or able to uh, stay in the game with that Rift Herald. Uh, uh, Michigan Blue. Ah, uh, so, sorry about that. Michigan Blue, uh, just unfortunately going down, misplaying after misplay here for the mid game, and it looks like Utah State has the upper hand. Are they going to be able to do something with this? With this momentum, they broke open the map completely, so death brushes are, are available. Objectives are going to be that much harder for Michigan Blue to get. It's Utah State's game to kind of lose here. Might be a little too early to say that. It might be, but you could see like what they were thinking. When they saw two people under tower versus five, they said go. And then they went into the inner yeah. tower and they saw two people versus five and they said go. And then they went to the inhibitor tower and they saw two versus versus five and some of them said go and some of them said back. So I'd like to see them on the same page if possible. Bo the man is just eating the cooling as he's walking out. He does get the movement speed bonus as he goes back. Shadow Flame is on his way up, but there goes Pokey X Pro with the Gale Force to secure his kill. A mummy is too far away to land the bandage tosses as in gets the damage, but uh -oh. Oh, he's gonna go back in as Pizza Hoot is forced to dash back to his clone as in lands the Ethereal Chains. Are they Abscons? I thought it was Ethereal Change, but my mistake. I think that's probably LeBlanc. But I mean, they just throw it back and forth. When you think they're fighting, they just go in for one more round again and again and again. So just expending these cooldowns, we see a teleport on the mid lane, it looks like Yone is coming back into the fray. Soul point is at stake right now with this dragon coming up. We are on Infernal Dragon. USU is bullying their way into the tunnel. Nar is trying to build up that Nar bar as fast as he can, but it's going to take a little bit too long. Yeah, Michigan Blue definitely wants this Infernal, so they need that that extra bit of damage to really shut down Utah State. Uh oh. Look at that. Mummy goes in, flashes forward Ooh. to land his ultimate, but. Nar does not have his ability just yet. Pizza Hoot is able to get Azin at the very beginning. And the team fight right now is chaotic all over the place. The Shadow Phoenix is limping away. Low the man just needs one more Q. Can he land the boulder? He cannot as it gets body boxed. And Fengua still alive yet again as Pizza Hoot is 1v3 in the back line. Low the man steps forward and is able to get a kill for himself. But meanwhile, it is 2v4. Bazinga Brain lands the cast at the very end of the fight. Feathers go oh. down, but that last auto attack from Pokéx Pro is able to get the kill for himself. Well, the man steps up to put some damage on, but Pokey Pro is able to skirt around the boomerang to put his damage down. And Kaya Maya is able to limp away. They're able to get these wards cleared up as Fifth Business is just waiting, hoping for oh, a base Asin. check. Teleport comes in, and here comes Azim. He's not able to land the Abscon to be able to get the knockup. He is still the explosive casco. As Lo the man steps up a little bit too far forward, the wow. guild forces oh. Pokey Pro go through the minion wave, and he ends him with the calling <laughs> and takes his life. And after a long team fight with another teleport coming in, <laughs> Dragon is still alive. <laughs> the oh, man. Rain going around the middle, gets the body slam, lands the slowest, as and is able to get the heal going up. Bubble does miss, but he goes back onto him, and he is in the middle of five. And as in, in a dangerous spot, just waiting on his cooldowns, but he cannot oh. wait long enough as Pokéx Pro goes on a rampage. And it looks like this is going to be Soul Point, Infernal Soul Point at that for Michigan Blue. Yeah, this is this, this is extremely good for the state game state for Michigan Blue. Michigan Blue having Soul Point is going to cause U desperation in Utah State's macro play. They're going to have to really conserve the resources for the team fight. Oh, are they going to be able to do a little bit more? Oh, he they decide not to. Oh. The but there's the fate seal, and Yone just going for it. Goes in and goes out. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Pops the immortal shield bow to keep himself alive, but all at the expense of taking down Valentine on the AD carry. So keeping that pressure up high, trying to keep that tempo high, and taking back what's almost their first goal lead of the game. Wow.
Incredibly well done again. The hot potato, like you said, back and forth, back and forth. And uh, yeah, it was too early to say uh, Utah State's game to lose. It, the Michigan Blue was not that far behind, and they showed they went ahead and fought back valiantly. The TP by Azin, I think, was fine, but it should have been to really get the dragon. But instead, they went ahead and looked for they went ahead and looked for kills. Low the man sticked around a little too much, was able to get taken down by the Lucian and again caused a deficit in bodies around the objective. And then once Azen went down, once he got stuck in between all members of Michigan Blue, Michigan Blue was able to pick up the objective. And the, uh, Infernal Soul is very scary on the enemy team. Just provides so much wave clear, provides so much damage. That is something you do not want a Yon on the side lane to have. And uh, in this, oh, low the man. Is yes, he gonna be able to... oh. Not in range for the Nar, so he can't make any big plays happen right there. But low the man does have a lot of the gold for his team. But here's As, and he has the tidal wave available. He's gonna use it for Pokey X Pro. Oh, who gets oh. knocked up? Who gets hit with the feathers? There goes the feather call. There comes the Ooh. recall. The E from Valentine is gonna get a shutdown for himself. And as the blade caller calls into his death, they're gonna move to the Baron. Pizza Hoot with the teleport is available in the bot side, but they're going to start up Can this they do Baron. Baron? They might be able to. Azen is just kind of waiting for the team. The face check does not have his ultimate available just yet, but he's forced to go back and rejoin his team as Nar is just kind of sitting on the Raptor camp trying to get his Nar bar up. Team is still hitting away at the Baron at 7,000 HP, and PokéX Pro is going to be up in 10 seconds. No teleport available, but they're just kind of out and around oh. and waiting. Baron is doing a lot of damage. Here comes Pizza Hoot trying to put the damage down, but is forced to go back out. And here's the big ultimate from Mumu to make something happen, and the team is going to be going back. They really didn't want the Baron. They just wanted the fight. Shadow Phoenix is trying to lock him down, but they're just going to push them back into their own jungle. They're going to take the red buff, and PokéX Pro is coming back ready for another fight. As well, the man is stepping up maybe a little bit too far, not going to be punished. And right now, they're just going to handshake, go back to their lanes. What a scary sequence of events. Yeah, this doesn't look too good, though. A lot of low health bars on the Utah State side. It's going to cause for Michigan Blue to have a little bit of better of a siege onto that mid turret and therefore crack open the map for them. Be able to open it up that much more. Oh, no. Looks like they're just dancing. Knowing this series, though, there's, there's a potential. There's a potential. Death coming up. Yeah, uh, look at Valentine. Valentine was eating a lot of these keys, but here comes Shadow Phoenix over the wall, lands the ultimate double TP yep. from both of them. There's the title call. Colleen hits almost nobody as Azen is in the back line. Hit the fate seal oh. on two people. Puts down some big damage, but he gets locked down by Shadow Phoenix as the stun is just too much. Tornado is trying his best to divert some damage, but here comes Pizza who does not land the knockup. No CC is going to fall onto them as Lola Man goes back in the Minionar form. They step back towards the Baron. They're going to reclaim vision control. Are they in a position where they can take it? Oh, I don't think so, but I think a bait is definitely something they can do. They have an extra body on the map. Oh, let's see. They're fighting for it. Bazinga bring body slams forward, does not land. Tornado doesn't land as well, but there's Pizza who over the wall, puts the damage out on the fifth business. They're just trying to take the jungler out. Uh, Jana uses the ultimate to keep themselves alive, but Pizza Hoot forced to use the Immortal Shilbo. That passive is proc, and Bazinga Brain is just limping away right now as Lo the Man is just throwing rock after rock, building out of building. I didn't know Talia was in this game. Bazinga Brain <laughs> is stepping down really low. Is that a oh. slither of health? Has about 5 HP or so before that even happens, so they're forced to limp away. And the rest of the team of USU is now alive with healthy uh, health bars, and Dragon is up in 35 seconds. Oh man, Amumu's gonna be late to it. He's gonna be ten. He he's got ten seconds on his death uh, on his respawn, but Michigan Blue is gonna be able to be on the map a lot sooner and with an extra body. It's gonna be up to Azen to take one pivotal ultimate. I'll probably say Fate Sealed. Fate Sealed has been the ultimate that's really been game changing for the team fights. Uh, Sejuani ultimate can also lock, help lock down one potential carry, but having the damage kind of spread out on Michigan Blue side, I think Azen should go ahead and take Fate Sealed and really try to make a Team fight change. Oh. Man, look at that damage. PokéX Pro just landing one combo. Nar steps forward, puts down Whoa. the Q, the empowered auto attack, but the tidal wave whiffs wide. So big ultimate used already at the beginning of this fight. They're moving yep. down into that dragon corridor 5v5. And I don't know if Azen can step into the middle of all five. We saw what happened last time. Just got locked down, locked up, and sent back to the fountain. He's able to pull up a cast mm -hmm. with the AP ratio. He should be able to do a lot of damage. For a man of chains, you would expect for him to understand how, what what getting chained and locked down 
is. <laughs> oh man, are they gonna be able to take it? This extends this extends the game a lot more, and which becomes a little bit better for Utah oh, look State. At Shadow Phoenix, look at Shadow Phoenix over the wall. He dashes in and lands the ultimate. Bazinga brain <laughs> gets Valentine's eyes. Not even able to use the feather storm. Who got the dragon? It was Blue Team, so no soul just yet, but it's a 4v1 against First Business as Bazinga Brain is trying to track someone down, and Azin is looking to make it a 2v1. Overall, a 3 for nothing team fight as Michigan Blue keeps themselves alive. They're going to push in that midway. They're going to go up to the Baron. Very low health bars from both of them. No teleport available for Azin. Nar does have the teleport available, but I don't think he's going to be able to stop it. No, unfortunately, he's not going to be able to stop it. But Amumu does secure the Inferno uh, Dragon, so no soul for Michigan Blue. This Baron buffed push isn't going to be as detrimental as it would have been with Soul. So I think they do live to fight at least seven more minutes. Uh, they do have a little bit of a clear. They have lanes shoved. They're going to be on the map back faster. They need to take care of topside, which, Nar, which low the man looks like he's running over to. Once you shove all waves, it becomes uh, it becomes a little bit more of a chess match to see which lane is uh, is Michigan Blue going to go ahead and shove. Incredibly well done by Michigan Blue, able to take down some uh, able to take down some bodies, but nonetheless Utah State getting the better of that, delaying the game, delaying Soul, and uh, Amumu fifth business taking care of business. So with this Baron, they're going to be able to step up and kind of exert some more pressure on the map. Breaking down this first mid tower just gives you so much Finally. pressure to be able to invade and <laughs> get that damage. Um, but we see Azin on the bot side just trying to farm up two and six so far in this match. So not being able to go in and just do his Silas things. Oh, oh that light, look at that damage. Colleen going down on the fifth business who has half HP already. If they, all they have to do is just pull the trigger. Here comes Shadow Whoa. Phoenix over the side. Feathers are down, so being able to zone the rest of the team. But here comes Bazinga Brain stepping up with the teleport. Azin is still just pushing away at that bot turret, so trying to trade objectives as best as he can. We still got a lot of abilities available. Low the man is kind of face tanking as much as he can, as that cannon minion is just whacking away at it. But Azin is doing so much work in that bot lane. I'm not sure what kind of minion wave he has. He has a very big minion wave, so he's able to get a lot of local gold and tower gold into his pocket. As Bazinga Break goes to the top side, they're going to rotate over. Yone oh. did back, but they do lose the inhibitor tower, so they pull the trigger, but they're not able to get any kills. Uh, Shadow Phoenix forced to limp away. The slow does apply this time. Here comes the Shirelias for the movement speed as Low the Man steps forward, hops forward as well and gets the slow again on the Low the Man. He has Gnar available. Can he get up and over that wall to make a big Gnar happen? No, he cannot. As they oh. are forced to go all the way back to their own wave. But here comes Pizza who goes forward, uses the Fate Seal, doesn't hit anybody, but Bazinga Braid is on the backside. Flash Body Slam doesn't land the cast just yet, but he puts the damage on, on the Kayamaya and there's the damage Low the Man forced to flash away. As Azen gets locked uh -oh. up by the Sejuani ultimate, Pizza Hoot is off to the side, doesn't land the secondary knockout, but he doesn't need it as Pizza Hoot goes on a killing spree. But Zinga Brain is able to take the wave, and it is five members strong marching against three into the USU base. Bubble. Oh man, incredibly well done by Michigan Blue. It's looking very grim for Utah State. What a clutch bubble. Yo, Fang Hua hasn't really been too good with those bubbles, but man, when the time calls for it, he really does step up to the plate. Bubble, they take the inhibitor, and now it's going to be a natural shove into the mid lane. Silas, though, can go ahead and clear up those super minions. Any, you know, any spellcaster helps clear those up. So they really got set up on a little bit of a timer here. Uh, Silas being able to arm up the whole mid wave. Oh, oh. Oh, they might be a little bit lazy on their recall. Bazinga Brain gets caught with that rock as Low the Man steps forward, gets the rock yet again, lands it slow, has an R available, but the Nar bar is going to wear uh -oh. off as he goes back in the mini. But here comes Amumu over the line, lands the bandage toss once, lands the bandage toss twice. Oh. Here comes Valentine stepping forward as Gragas is forced to get out of harm's way for the root, but he goes right <laughs> into the waiting arms of Amumu as Azin steps forward, does not land the Everfrost. It wasn't an Everfrost, I don't know what that was, but is not able to put down and stop the recall. So two, no, one member, Bazinga Brain does fall for Michigan Blue. Um, is just going to slow their steam rolling just a little bit as Baron is off. They're going to pick up possibly their second dragon of the game. Uh-oh, what's he re what, what did a low the man recall for? 
Did he recall for just healing? He, uh, I didn't see him buy anything. Nah, oh no. Anything either. It has just enough. Oh, maybe no. he's looking for random wins? Oh, maybe, maybe clear up mid lane? No. He, he should have stayed. He sh should have stayed. That's a 4v4 now. Oh, he's so there's keeping... There's the teleport, and now he's teleport kind of in the middle of 4. He's in a really awkward spot. He is marking Pizza Who out of the game, though. He's able to get that damage down and get hyper. And right now, he's in a really awkward spot, wow. but Azin is there in the nick of time to stop him. Does not land the slow on the Sejuani's. Here comes a flanking TP from Bazinga Brain. He is on the backside. Valentine goes low. Is going to get knocked up and uses the Feather Storm to dodge the most of the damage. Gets a shutdown on the Pizza Hoop, but he is eventually going to fall. Meanwhile, Poke X Pro is just doing work on the junglers. And right now, they're a little bit split on who they're going to attack as Azin is still alive. Has his cooldowns available shortly, but they're going to chase him down as Bazinga Brain is on the mid lane. And. They're going for the kill instead of for the end at this point. I think they just should just let him go. Shadow Phoenix is oh. marking him right now while the rest of the team marches down mid. And he's going to stop him. Can he live long enough to make something happen? Shadow Phoenix now going to be forced to put down some CC and mark him without dying as Azen is going to be able to heal up with that Kingslayer again and again. But meanwhile, on the mid lane tower, we see them working on those Nexus turrets. Is One tower game? falls already. There is six seconds left on the death timer for Zaya. Five seconds left for Lo the Man as Pokéx Pro steps forward and gets oh. Kayamaya down. But two members are coming up right now from the fountain, but the towers are down already. That's an exposed nexus. No bubble has landed yet as Pokéx Pro eats a little bit of damage from Will the Man. Bazinga Break steps forward, misses his abilities, but here comes the uh, teleport from Pizza Who. He's getting ready to enter the fight. Poké Pro is able to get away, but Zinger Break slays down Lowe's the Man. Fifth Business is trying to walk away as Fallen Time gets taken out by Pizza Who. Fifth of Business takes down one kill, but it's going to be too little too late as the rest of the team is going to send Mummy back to the fountain without a oh friend, my. without a win in this series. And Michigan Blue is going to take the sweep. They find themselves in the finals of the Dominate League. 3-0. Wow. Wow. Kudos to Michigan Blue sweeping an undefeated Utah State team. Whoa, I did not I did I did when I heard the story of undefeated versus five two, I didn't think I didn't think that was potentially possible, a sweep on either side. So we knew Michigan Blue was a rowdy team, good with team fight. Oh, it's not live? Oh sorry. One second. Yeah, but just finishing <laughs> up that match, I mean just that whole series was so back and forth. It was pins and needles the entire time. But all it really took was just one misplay, one overstep, one lingering too long. If you make a snap decision, you have to make that snap decision. Because otherwise, you give the other team the chance to adjust. So USU just not being as sharp, as decisive as they needed to be in these situations. And Michigan Blue basically just running it over again and again. Pokey X Pro doing great on this Lucian. Uh, Nami being able to step up and support them as well. Even if he didn't get that bully lead that he wants at the beginning, he did really, really well to make that happen. Um, oh, yeah. And, I mean, shout-outs also. The rest of the team, Michigan Blue just did great all the way across the board. I mean, even though Bazinga ended up a little bit behind in game one on that Jax, he still stuck around. He was able to make himself relevant. And that's what you want to do. If you lose, lose gracefully. If you win, yeah. spread the wealth to your team. Yeah, most definitely. And again, I'm trying to look back at this final fight of what happened. Like, what could have changed? Zaya needed all of the DPS to come out for them to really take over. But just the two flanks that they had to worry about caused miscommunication. And it basically led to a Michigan Blue victory. They are able to t they were able to take down the Yone, but it, it looked like Zaya was in a horrible position. And Zaya goes down. John is out of the fight. Amumu and Silas are left to fend off on their own against three members. And one of the members being Lucian, the carry for Michigan Blue. And yeah, that's all she wrote, basically. It just came down to respawn, fight, fight for your life. And unfortunately, they, they went down. Whoa. This series was close, though. This isn't like a regular sweep. This is this isn't no normal sweep. I think this is definitely a hard-fought series. Incredibly, uh, incredibly well done by Utah State. The uh, three-zero doesn't give justice to what Utah State did to Michigan Blue. But uh, uh, kudos, yeah, kudos, kudos to Utah State. But unfortunately, they still go home, and Michigan Blue goes to the finals. And uh, who are we gonna? I think we're gonna interview somebody, right? Uh, yeah, well, let's uh, go ahead. And we were talking about this a little bit before we started the match. Um, we said, you know, who do we want to interview, especially after the first two games? And um, I think we're going to try to pull someone on there. Uh, we're going to be looking into that on the backside. We'll talk a little bit about this.
Oh, ah! well, <laughs> looks looks like uh, the players have already gone, uh, so we won't be able to get the interview going. But I mean, we will be able to pull them, I think, from the finals because I, I want to hear a little bit from them on their path over here. Taking down the yep. number one seed always feels good to be able to deliver that first loss and especially in such a clutch situation. Um, I mean, you, you got to feel good well, about yourself going into the, these final weeks. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd be I'd be super stoked if I was Michigan Blue. Taking down an undefeated team, kind of just clawing your way up there and making it into the finals in such a such an amazing fashion. Oh, oh, can we can we get one person? Are they back? All right, Acolyte. Which one? Which one do you think? I have uh, two people in mind, but it's up to you. Looks like we're pulling in a uh, Pizza Hoot, the mid laner from Michigan and Blue. Pizza Hoot, congratulations on a very fun best of five series. That was a great sweep to watch. I mean, first thing I want to ask you is just how are you feeling after those games? Uh, I think our team morale right now is like pretty high since like yeah. we just like 3 0 them. It felt like all of them felt pretty good games except for the second one was a bit shaky, but we brought it back somehow. So I'm really glad that we won the series. Yeah, how do well, I have one question? Uh, well, well, two basically. One is, were you in that that grueling three game series a couple weeks back that we also casted that uh, oh. went to like 50 minutes? Was that you or was that Michigan Maze? Oh, uh, that was Michigan Maze, I think. The it was it. Oh, okay. We're talking about like the Bo Five or? No, it was the best of three in the regular season, right before playoffs. But uh, I thought it was you guys. Sorry about that. All right, no, so yeah, that's yeah. that's question one. Question two, though, is when you when you lost to the Akali and gave up a big bounty, was was that was it in your guys' head that hey, this Akali is now a threat, or were you were you guys still kind of not worrying too much about about the Akali? So I think for the most part during the that game state, we thought we like there's no way we could lose. But I th there was like a bit of miscommunication. I thought she burned alt, but she didn't. So like we took Ooh. the fight, and then yeah, and then she got the one k. But we thought it wouldn't be losable. But then we lost another shutdown and gave it to her again. So like that's when we thought like oh this might kind of be rough for us, and it it turned out to be true. So but I'm glad we like brought it back. We like stuck through the game, and we gave up objectives when we had to. So I think that's what made us win. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, game three, game three. What what was the decision to go Gragas instead of Wukong? So I think our team specifically, if you've looked at our <clears throat> recent games throughout the split, mm -hmm. we prioritize the Gragas flex, uh, flex a lot since we think it's a really powerful draft uh, like tool, I guess. Because oh, we can okay, flex okay. into three roles. Mm -hmm. And we kind of assumed that uh, their jungler couldn't play it. So it kind of worked out for us in the end. Oh, that makes a lot. That makes a lot of sense, then. Yeah, especially them not picking it up and just going to Mumu. Yeah, that 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 definitely worked in your guys' favor, then. Okay. Uh, um, I I got a question on a personal level. Going against someone, um, I mean, who is up in the master tier, uh, solo queue ladder. I mean, it looks like you had all the confidence going to get him. How does that feel for you, being that player, to be able to go toe for toe, one for one, and being able to pull out these solo kills in in different situations, not once but two or three times throughout the series? Well, I think I felt pretty good uh, just looking at, I guess, like, I don't know. I just thought, like, if this guy wasn't on Akshan or something, looking, looking at his, like, uh, his own, like, match history, he seems like a big Akshan one trick. And, like, we kind of have the similar uh, play style where we, like, kind of, like, scrappy fights. But I guess, like, during the first game, I kind of realized, like, I can probably win against this guy if I just pick, like, more dueler duelist type characters and it proved to work so i don't know i just like i guess i had confidence and it paid off so yeah it did oh yeah it did that's kind of that's that, that that's pretty that's pretty gutsy to do that uh <laughs> but i mean i always say um uh comfort over counter uh and i think that goes all the i think that covers every level under pro just because if you go on a comfort pick i'm pretty sure you're comfortable on your own the way you were picking it in uh into two different matchups right yeah so i think i think yeah. our draft also it worked out overall since uh the third game obviously we got sejion which is a very powerful pick even though some of the early fights it looked like they were kind of like abusing me but in overall in the end i think our other side lanes kind of pulled through for us and i kind of like got to the mid game ish section fairly well and then he also started to fall behind at the later stage of the game yeah and for the second game 
even the usually Akali Yon is Akali favored, but yeah, I think I just had confidence. I've played the matchup a bit, and uh, I think I could beat him. So and it worked out. Wow, nice. Uh, <laughs> and last, That's pretty last question. Just kind of <laughs> heading into the finals next week. Um, it looks like you. I'm still waiting on the results of the other stream. But how confident are you guys going into the finals of next week? Do you guys feel like you guys are on an upswing? I know you guys just three would the series today, but leading up to today, have you guys had success in your scrims? Do you guys feel like you're in a good spot? Are you guys able to pull out two or three different kinds of comps? Uh, I think for the last few weeks, we felt pretty confident. We've been, obviously last week, we also won, I think it was 3-1, and then today we won 3-0. I think for us, more more importantly, like, we need to look back on these games and kind of analyze, like, where we went wrong. Because I feel like their team, also the enemy team for this uh, series, they they felt kind of lost at some points. No flame, but, like, so I think the second game was a big kind of point where, like, we threw a massive lead and we could have lost and maybe that could have like changed the whole series. So I think right now we're pretty high in morale. I think everything's looking good. We just need to go back and look at uh, the games and, you know, look at the other team and see what they play so we can draft around it and make plans for it. Mm. I think we're, I think it's looking good for us. I, excellent. I, I mean, I can tell you uh, myself, I thoroughly enjoyed watching your match today. You guys looked really oh, yeah. strong in all of your positions, so it was kind of hard to, to pick someone, but after those first two games, it looked like you really uh, did a lot of work for your team. I'm sure your team did a lot to help you out as well. Uh, Shadow Flame, I think, was really clutch in a lot of the engages. I saw one time he fa face-checked the bush, and he saw three people, and then just hit Cyclone instantly. Oh, I thought yeah. he would have been... I thought if I was me, I would have been surprised and just like freaked out, but it looked like he just went with it. Yeah, I think I think everyone had a a lot of moments in this series, like not just me included. Like I think everyone played super well and like oh, yeah. were clutch factors in a lot of scenarios. Like Bazinga Brain, <laughs> like his Gragas, like getting those picks were really good and like yep. playing as a really hard lane like Olaf, he did very well. And like yeah. yeah, like Shadow Phoenix got a lot of picks and like was the main. He's usually our main engage tool. And our bot lane just completely, like, Zai, the enemy ADC Zai one trick, he said we can play into it all games. And, like, they kind of just, like, permanently salty run back, and they proved to be better bot lane, so. Wow. Yo, I like that. <laughs> I like that head-on uh, personality you guys have. Yo, let's go blue. Okay. I like that a lot. <laughs> Yeah, having that confidence to be able to answer those one tricks, that's really much needed going in. So it looks like you guys are going to be playing against WLS next uh, next week. They won 3-0 in their game as well. How much have you guys been keeping up with the other group in the league? Do you guys do that at all, or do you guys just kind of cross that bridge when you get to it? Uh, for specifically this series, we took we took the week to look at our opponents to kind of like find drafts around it, maybe practice some other picks to actually like see what we can do to win the game. So we're probably going to do the same for this team. I actually, yeah, like you said, I don't, we don't know what team we're playing against. I, or I don't specifically. So we're probably going to have to look at uh, what they'd play. And again, just do what we did for this series. Just make plans, practice picks, and try and see cracks in their play style. No. All right. Sounds like solid. It. Well, thank you so much for your time on this interview. I know you want to go back and celebrate with your team, and I'm sure you guys are more than ready to kind of get to work on next week's finals. Uh, do you have any closing comments that you'd like to, to leave off before we let you go? Uh, shoot, I, I don't know. I guess, like, we, we hope to see, or hopefully you guys watch us win next week, I guess. Oh, all right. <laughs> that's it. All right. right. I appreciate yeah, it. Thank, well, you thank you so, you so much, much for, for your time. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that sounds like it's about going to do it for us. That was a fantastic best of three series. So thank you so much mm -hmm. for sticking around with Fantastic Fat Man and myself. Fantastic Fat Man, you got anything else to say before we close up? Nope, other than I'm excited. You're telling me we had two semifinals that went 3-0? That means we got like some of the best versus, versus the best. I like that. I'm definitely tuning in next week. We will for sure. So we hope to see you guys next week on our main stream as we look at the finals. The Dominate League is coming to a close for our winter season before we move into the spring. So make sure you guys drop a follow if you haven't already. Make sure you guys stay tuned. 
hopefully we'll get to see you next week. If we're not on the caster's desk, we'll definitely be in the chat to watch with you guys. Um, you guys have a fantastic rest of your weekend, and we will see you next week for the finals. WLS versus Michigan Blue. See you then.